Wrestling. This is the first Sunday of the first week of the first month of the new year. It is a time of renewed spirit, of possibility, of boundless hope. But not for these athletes. For them, the pain of the past is still present. It lingers, torments, defines their every waking moment. Outrage and denial are Christian Cage's constant companions. The World Heavyweight Champion early in 2007, he lost the title without ever being beaten. Tonight, he battles the reigning champion, Kurt Angle, a man fighting his own personal demons in the first heavyweight championship bout of 2008. AJ Styles and Tomko spent most of the year as members of Christian's coalition before joining the Angle Alliance. One has since dissolved his allegiance. One must decide his. And tonight, both must unite to defend their world tag team titles. Ecstasy cannot even describe the feeling Gail Kim felt when she became the first ever TNA Women's Knockout Champion at Bound for Glory. But since that very night, she has been stalked, confronted, and attacked by the brutal, awesome Kong. Tonight, the champion takes on possibly the most dominant woman in professional wrestling history. It is the dawn of a new year, yet they are still haunted by shadows of the past. Haunted by failure, haunted by anger, tormented by loss and betrayal. Simply put, the ghosts of 2007 will not go away. And now, TNA Wrestling presents Final Resolution. Studios in Orlando, Florida, where tonight at Final Resolution, TNA's first pay-per-view of 2008, we will answer the question, what will AJ Styles' decision be? Will he align with the champion Kurt Angle or the challenger Christian Cage? Well, tonight, the return of Ultimate X, Gail Kim versus Ultimate Kong for the knockout title, AJ Styles and Tonko versus Samoa Joe and Kevin Nash for the Tag Team Championship, and Angle, Cage, for the TNA World Title. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the opening contest live at TNA's Final Resolution Attack Team Match. Scheduled for one fall, introducing team number one. First accompanied by Christy Hemme, Lance Hoyt and Jimmy Rave, The Rock and Rave in fiction. Yes, we open Final Resolution with tag team action. And for the past few months, as you see the close-up look there of the lip lock with Lance Hoyt and Christy Hemme, it has been TNA knockout Christy Hemme finding herself on the receiving end of repeated shots from a member of LAX's Latino Nation, leading Lance Hoyt and Jimmy Ray to complain to management about male-on-female violence that's not tolerated by TNA. And you know that's the ultimate goal. And Mike, 
You might want to question, though, the methods that they've been using right now to get the attention. Bringing out that member of the Latino nation that is focused solely, it seems, on Christy Hemme. And of course, like you mentioned, it has just drawn so many complaints from the Rock and Rave infection about the man on woman violence. But one thing about LAX, they definitely got the Rock and Rave's attention. Crowd here at Final Resolution showing their firm support for LAX, the Latin American Exchange, as we have referee Slick Johnson ready to signal for the opening bell and get the first match of 2008 underway. And here we go. Mike, you mentioned about LAX in 2008 and, and just how they took the fight from a couple years ago. This is a great opportunity for the Rock and Rave infection right here in 2008, being able to start out to walk down that ramp first and find a resolution and make a statement that they're a tag team to stay here in DNA. I think they made a statement, Don, this past Thursday on Impact Good as point. we see Jimmy Ray go for that quick cradle two. roll up and get a two count on Homicide. Think of how successful the Rock and Rave infection. Jimmy Ray in the ring at this point against Homicide and his tag team partner Lance Hoyt. Think how they did so great in that tag team gauntlet on impact. Well, neither one of them were ever eliminated in the gauntlet itself. And it's because they really know how to work together. And even though there's, you just see Homicide giving the, the blows right there in the face, one thing about them, and there has been that controversy with Christy Hemme in the group, they still are united when they're in that ring. And there is Christy Hemme looking on from ringside, very happy with her man, Lance Hoyt, as well as the Rock and Rave infection. And now it's Hernandez and Lance Hoyt, the two big muscle men of these teams to square off. And when you look at the makeup of the two teams in our opening matchup at Final Resolution, almost mirror images with the big power individuals squaring off now. Plus, it's also Homicide and Jimmy Ray who opened this match, more agile of the competitors. Absolutely. Oh, wow! You talk about ringing in your yeah. ear. And look at the strength of Hernandez. And he just sends Lance Hoyt out of ring. Here comes Homicide. Oh, he went for the tope on Elo. And Jimmy Ray had the knee waiting for him and caught him right in the head. Great move by Jimmy Ray to come oh. off that attempt at the dive by Homicide. Oh. And now, oh, did you hear the impact of that? He, he is, he defies gravity, he defies logic. It, it, it is amazing, the, the, the strength that he had. Oh, nice drop kick to the face of Jimmy Rave. And Jimmy Rave awful impressive early on in this match. But right now, he took the shot by Hernandez after he got Lance Hoyt. Uh-oh, catapult Here comes the combination. Yep, catapult into the clothesline. Homicide follows up with a senton across the chest and midsection of Jimmy Ray while he was positioned on the knees of Big Hernandez. And you're right, Hernandez, he really does defy any kind of stereotype yes. about big man, small man, X Division type competitor. Those labels that Don, we so often try to put on these TNA competitors. Watch this move. Up on the shoulder is Jimmy oh, Ray on Hernandez, but then point in from behind to cut him off, and he just took Hernandez and flung him out to the floor. Well, they forgot about Big Lance Hoyt, the six foot nine Texan, made his way back in, and now look at that screen. Man alive. He just twirled up. as Christy Hemme, looking on from ringside, seems pretty happy that her rock and rave infection have turned this match up in their favor. Oh, they got momentum, Mike. You said it. Homicide, though, we know one thing about him. There's no such thing as the word quick. It is vocabulary, but look at this. Oh, man, he puts the knee perfect. And then the big boot by Lance Hoyt jacks him in the jaw. You're right. Inverted atomic drop leads to that big boot. And Lance Hoyt just leveled Homicide, took him down with ease. And Hernandez finally staggering his way up just to get on the apron to join his partner, Homicide, in this tag match. They well, missed that move. Here he comes again. A slingshot in that time. Dual clothesline. One arm for Hoyt, how one arm for Ray. How do you prepare for him, Mike? How do you prepare for Hernandez? And look at this. The Cracker Jack just grabs him by the neck, slings him over his back, and that strength is unreal. And oh, he does the same thing with a back body drop on Lance Hoyt. Here comes G. 
Jenny Ray charging at Hernandez, who catches him in midair. Going to take him up. <laughs> Sit down, powerbomb. Oh, 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 no. He just flipped him over. He wasn't done with him yet. I think that's a statement. He wanted to make sure that Jimmy Ray and Lance Hoyt knew that they're going to do whatever they want, when they want, but that's what I'm talking about about Lance Hoyt. You can't overlook his agility. Nice moonsault off the top rope. It's another move that surprises us, the big man, Lance Hoyt, going airborne with that moonsault, takes Hernandez out, homicide in, hits scissors for Lance Hoyt. Is he going to dive now? Going to go. Nobody's going to stop him this time. Oh, look at that. Tope can hit him right through the rope. It's amazing when he hits it, but it looks like it hurt him, too. Homicide laying face first on the concrete, but that's two big hits that Lance Hoyt has taken. And now you got the streak of Hernandez, and he just, just pushes Jimmy Ray off the ring. That's a beautiful shoulder block by Hernandez. Going to try and exploit the size advantage, the power weight advantage, the edge that he has over Jimmy Ray. Up to his shoulders, keep your eyes on Christy Hemme. Oh, she's got a hold of the leg, and of course, Hernandez couldn't see it. With the back turn, you got to give her credit. She timed it perfectly, the ref was out of view. He was looking at Hernandez too, and she was able to save Jimmy Ray at that point. All about the timing. Hernandez never expected that knee from Jimmy Ray, perfectly placed right into the gut. Oh, he came in and cut off the distance in a hurry. He just, I mean, he just used that speed that he's got. Now look at Jimmy Ray, just putting one shot after another, and, and that's the way of sending a message. And you know what? Lance Hoyt's not the only muscle in this team. I can bring you down the balls too. And you can see, look at Hernandez hurt. Important tag team matchup to kick off our final resolution pay-per-view. The Latin American Exchange, the former TNA World Tag Team title holders against the Rock and Rave Infection, a team looking, yes, to move back up. Oh! Jimmy Ray, precarious oh. position up on top, and Hernandez just shoved him right into the post, and he caught that stuff. wasn't, that oh. was not a pretty landing for Jimmy Ray. No, he caught it. Well, there's that member of Latino Nation. You can see sneaking on the outside of the ring, out of, out of view. Uh -oh. And it looks like, was he, what, what does she have in the hand? Does they have that, that sock that type object she always, bring, she always brings in? Look at this. Possibly, what is Hernandez? Oh, no, look at this! What? Not this. What? It's like a super border toss! Buddy, he just caught them both from behind, and now Christy Hemme pointing to that member of Latino Nation that's been in her face all the time, and now look at this, Lance Hoyt. It's got him throttled around the neck, but what a low blow. Yeah, Lance Hoyt talking about this male-on-female violence. The low blow from Christy Hemme having zero effect. Not a thing, and now you see the kick to the gut. Takes the hair and throws Christy Hemme out of the ring. Just tossing. Wait. What? what? Well, that answers that question. What the hell? Now we understand why the Latino nation and why LAX wasn't worried what? about the male on female violence. Mark this down. Don West actually speechless for a moment. Getting more speechless by the minutes. Holy I, cow, I, I, how in the world could I, you? You know, Don, I think I can safely say that we will never again confuse this member of the Latino nation with being a male. Well, that answers a lot of questions in Christy Hemme's mind. You can just see the anger, but look at there. The member of the Latino nation has taken on an incredible transformation. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is a reveal. Great way to kick off Final Resolution. The victory for LAX. Now let's check out part one of the DCS. Storm and Young, drinking championship series. Very simple, Eric. It's like flipping a coin. You know how easy flipping a coin is? Yeah. Heads I win, tails you lose. Oh! <laughs> Why do you say something earlier? I did it! Ten times! Oh. Okay, it's, it's called Never okay. Have I Ever. Never Ever. All right. Well, how the rules go, There's if you say something, I say and it. I've done it, you've done it, then I take a drink. You take a drink. If I say something, and you've done it, I've done it. you take a I drink. No, 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 not yet. I ain't said nothing. Oh. All right, and the first person to take three drinks wins. 
Very simple. Okay. You got it? Hey, I brought you guys for a reason. This is you guys are the witnesses. We want this right down the middle. Even Steven, you're the witnesses, all right? Honest. All right, we, all right. you guys gotta we tell the truth bad. here. No lying in this game. No lying. No. Jackie! Do you know what I mean? He's trustworthy. I believe. Okay, you go first. Lock and load. Ow. All right. Say never have I ever seen Miss Brooks movies. You guys all gotta change uh, that. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna die. We're gonna die. <laughs> okay, that no count. Do it again. Baby, spitting on me. Uh -huh. All right, do it. All right. Never have I ever went to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> what is what you All right. That is awesome. You went to the moon. Neil Armstrong drink up, huh? He went to the moon. James Storm went to the moon. Do you really think he went to the moon? 97. I believe him. Okay, go, go. Never have I ever. Went down to Donald Duck, came out like that, about 16, 42, old man came like that. I didn't see him. I don't think I've done that. What the heck did he say? I don't think I've done that. Did you understand <laughs> <this>? <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> uh, I don't think so. He, he didn't get drunk. Uh. Okay. Never have I ever killed a lion with my bare hands. Yeah. I'm the lion master! <laughs> 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 Okay, hold on a second. No way. No way. Start yeah. with your hand. He's you really believe that? He's the lion master. He just said he's the lion master. That's what he's he said, but he lies. <laughs> All okay. right, Aaron. If you're saying yeah, two for two for storm. Okay, go. Never have I ever bought condoms at 1 a.m. in the morning. No, it was three o'clock. Remember that debut? Yeah, we that, went, was yeah. awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. We got it. It was three. They showed me how to get them, and it was really cool. And we. It was three, though. It was three. Embarrassing. My turn, my turn. Okay. Never have I ever been personally responsible for the riots in Detroit in 1967. 67? 67. That was me! That was me! Yeah! James, no, Eric, he was not even born yet. Are you serious? Easy now. You're gonna find I get to keep drinking. Yeah. He's not in there. He's been in jail, killed a lion, and went to the moon. Woo! Awesome. Awesome. He just won. We are the winner! Oh, yeah! Well, final resolution underway, as well as the best of three DCS, the Drinking Championship Series. It's Mike Tanay, Don West. Happy New Year, everyone. It's final resolution. DW, let's preview the night, what we have in store for everybody. Folks, let's go through the card tonight. It's going to be incredible. We're going to start it off with Awesome Kong versus Gail Kim. No disqualification for the TNA Women's Knockout Championship. Oh, I can't wait to see this one. One on one. It is going to be the Monster Abyss, all six foot eight, 350 pounds, against Judas Macias, the son of Father James Mitchell. Robert Roode and Miss Brooks take on Booker T, and no matter how hard he tries, Charmel wants to be a part of it in this mixed tag matchup. Well, that's going to be interesting, but how about the return of Ultimate X? Team 3D, joined by Johnny Devine against Black Machismo and those Motor City Machine Guns. I'll tell you what a tag team that I'm looking forward to seeing. That is Samoa Joe teaming up with Kevin Nash as they take on the tag team champions for the title, Tomko and the phenomenal AJ Styles. And how about our main event matchup? The TNA World's Heavyweight Championship. Yes, it's on the line. It's the challenger, Christian Cage. Yes, and it's the champion, the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle. And Don, there has been so much talk about this situation as far as AJ Styles and Tomko goes. We now know that Tomko's on his own. AJ, very indecisive at this point. Let's try to get to the bottom of this. Let's send it to Crystal. Maybe we'll find out what AJ's decision is. AJ Styles, the world awaits your decision. Last week on Impact, as we were going off the air, you stated that you would make a decision between the Angle Alliance and the Christian Coalition by Sunday. Well, it's Sunday, and we all are waiting to know what your decision is. Well, look, I said I'd make a decision tonight, and I will. I mean, I guess I have no choice, but the night's not over yet. I still got some time, okay? Because I'm going to keep thinking about this. I still got time. You know what? I still got time. That is where you're wrong. You're completely out of time, AJ. We have a title defense tonight against Nash and Samoa Joe. And I'm going to promise you something right now. As hard as we work for these belts, if you screw this up, your problems will become huge, very huge. Now, you need to make your decision, Kurt Angle or Christian. And I suggest you do that sooner rather than later. 
Well, you heard him, AJ. <laughs> What's your decision going to be? You know what, Crystal? I'll let you know. Sooner or later. <sighs> Hopefully it'll be sooner. Dustin Rhodes. I have been terrified. This person, this other side of me. This is one of those people that would come in after the sun went down. It scared the hell out of me. It still does today, and it's rattling my freaking brain. Dustin's alter ego, Black Ray, has been on a warpath since his TNA return. Nancy brought out his Arctic Fox, Misty in the cage. Along with his disgusting rat, Misty, he has left a crimson trail of terror in the six sided ring. Look out of God, they're putting that bag over the head of Kaz, and there's a live rat inside of there. And you can see Kaz obviously freaking out as the rat is going to work inside the bag. A trail that he denies having any part of. Kaz. You attacked me backstage for no reason. I don't even know you, Kaz, much less know why you would do something like that to me. His repressed past has culminated in a split personality so sick and twisted that he is unable to even acknowledge it. I attacked you because you put your rat on my face. I don't know what rat you're talking about, man. I'm going to give you an opportunity right now to apologize to me. Well, Dustin, I'm going to give you an opportunity to kiss my... And now, their feud will escalate to a new level as they come face to face at final resolution. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from the deepest, darkest corner of his mind, Black for months, he's explained to us, and when I say he, I'm talking about Dustin Rhodes, that from his childhood days, Don, he, he seems to have picked up this split personality, this alter ego, to the point where he's even oblivious to what he does is Black Rain. This is one strange individual. And his opponent from Anaheim, California, Chris! In our opening tag team matchup, we talked about LAX getting back in that tag title picture. When I look at Kaz, I see a young man who really broke through here in TNA in 2007. And while you think about 2008, his future going forward here in total nonstop action wrestling, you've got to say the sky's the limit for this guy. Well, this guy gets has so much talent, and there's not much of anything that he can't do in the ring. And, it, you know, you've seen him do things now to where he makes it look routine. And with anybody else, you would sit there and your jaw would drop, but Kaz is just one of those that it's effortless when he gets in the ring. Dustin, a.k.a. Black Rain, bringing that sickening rat Misty to ringside with him here for this matchup. And, you know, we saw that video preview, and I keep flashing back and thinking about what that must be like, Don, to see Kaz with Dustin Rhodes, Black Rain, putting the bag over his head and then taking that live rat and sticking it inside the bag. Oh, great clothesline that time by Kaz running off the apron when he put that rat inside the bag, and it was just, it was just gnawing on the face of Kaz. Well, it's, it's not even just the fear of the rat biting you and scratching you. It's the fear of what diseases that rat might carry. I mean, it's just... One of those things that you just absolutely just makes you sick to your stomach is Black Rain. What a vicious, vicious shot he gave to Kaz into the rail. And, oh, man, Kaz, though, able to get out of the way just in time as Black Rain catches his shoulder into the rail. I think he might have even been going for a diving headbutt there. Headbutt shoulder block combination on Kaz. You're right, avoided the contact. Dustin Black Ray goes into the guardrail, and then Kaz catches him up on the entrance ramp with a great kick. Well, I'll tell you something, he just ran right up there. And, and to be able to do that running uphill, which is what he had to do onto the ramp, shows you that athletic ability. Now he's toying with Black Rain, just kind of forcing him to go in a different direction and, and, and kicking him there in the ass and moving him up, up the ramp. Black Rain trying to slow down Kaz here, but not having much impact until a kick, which might have been a low blow. Hard to see that time from the camera angle that we had. Caught him either low blow or caught him oh, oh, in the oh. gut. And then a knee lift, a running knee lift. And Kaz goes airborne, flying from the entrance ramp down. And I think that is not good for him. Where did he hit? He caught the, the corner of the top of the stage up there. And I mean, look at him. He is in sheer pain. It looks like he hit his hip right on that 
sharp point of the stage, and right now, he's got to be in some unbelievable pain, and Black Rain realizes it, he's taking it and using it to his advantage. Boy, camera action up on the ramp, trying to get close up with Kaz and Black Rain as we see Black Rain turn this matchup on totally in his favor. Big offensive flurry right at the opening bell by Kaz, but since that point, Black Rain in the driver's seat. Oh, it was that one shot that he was able to do after he kind of caught him with that low blow. Then he was able to just kick him off of the top of the ramp onto the edge of the stage, and now he's just doing whatever he wants to with him. If he's got Kaz in all kinds of these precarious positions, and Kaz, he just he can't even seem to get himself straight up. Oh, what a shot to the head! Big right hand. Brutal shot is right. Black Ray connects on Kaz and watch him follow up the advantage. Drops the elbow and now gonna crank on the neck of Kaz. How about AJ Styles? I guess it's no surprise at how indecisive he has been after what we've seen in the past couple of weeks, but I thought once we came to final resolution tonight, then I thought we'd have an answer from him. Kurt Angle or Christian Cage, who he's going to align with for our TNA World Heavyweight Championship matchup. That's our main event tonight. Well, you can see how upset Tonko is about it also. I mean, he wants AJ Styles to make a decision so he can focus on the match they've got to handle later on. I mean, think about it. Think about that combination, Kevin Nash, Samoa Joe, that they've got to face. If you don't have all your wits about you, if you're thinking about other things, it could be very, very dangerous and they can lose that tag team championship tonight. Couldn't agree with you more as we see Black Rain now biting, chewing, gnawing on the forehead of Kaz. Oh, this guy is just one sick individual. And you know what, you, you, you talk about it how when, when Dustin Rhodes it, in, his, in that personality, that split personality. He's such a different human being, and, and he, he's oblivious to the things that Black Rain does. But it's obvious that Black Rain is the more dominant personality, and when he's in control, there's no telling how far he'll go. Reverse chin lock applied by Black Rain. Cal's gonna try and feed off the momentum of the standing room only crowd here at Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida for this final resolution pay-per-view and does. The rights and lefts, oh, but boy, he gets cut off immediately with that knee. But just turned him inside out with a knee as Kaz was coming in full momentum and Black Rain just cut him off and the crowd realizing that Kaz is in trouble and they're showing their disappointment in their chance to Black Rain. Oh man, what a vicious shot to the jaw of Kaz. One, Two. Oh, he got his shoulder up. Powerful move, jacking the jaw of Kaz, coming out of the corner, using the power advantage that he brings into this matchup against Kaz, but not able to put him away. And again, this is his effort. This is Black Rain's move to try and neutralize Kaz, try and keep him down. Don't let him use those ring ropes. Don't let him go to the top rope, Don, and unleash that offensive aerial display. That's right, he's keeping that speed grounded. And ever since that one shot that Kaz caught that hip on the stage, it was so wicked. He's not been the same, and you could just see it in his motions. But look at Kaz, and wow, they caught in the middle, of, in the ring at the same time, a mid-ring collision, and maybe, just maybe, but Kaz, you can just see he's still in such pain, but he needs a break like this to get things on an even field. Well, that'll take the wind out of you. The contact made, the attempt at that mid-ring cross-body block, and yes, both men go down. Both men crumble, as you see now, eye contact made as they, they try and clear the cobwebs and get back up to their feet to continue this match. Referee Rudy Charles putting in the count. We're at just at the eight point, the count of eight, and both men are up. Well, Black Ray missed with that shot. Now look at Kaz. It's like he, he, he got a little extra breath there, a breather, and he just shot it for shot, and then that spin kick, and he comes right back at him with another kick. Single leg kick, drops Black Rain, takes him to his back, charges a Black Rain, floats over, spinning neck breaker. Boy, that was a great move. Gonna go for the pin, One, got the leg two, hook, gets two. Go. Black Rain got the shoulder up just in time. He just didn't quite have enough there. He's gotta keep it on. He's gotta keep that barrage going. He can't let up for a minute because Black Rain has been able to use his strength and his size to his advantage in this matchup. Boy, after being grounded for the better part of five, six minutes, the opening part of this matchup, Kaz has finally oh. got it rolling. Slingshot in, DDT, One, pin, two. two. Oh, man, I thought he had it for sure right there as he just planted the head of Black Rain into that mat. That was instinct. Yeah, judging by the look on the face of Kaz, I think he thought he had him at that point, too. Two count only before Black Rain able to kick out. Now he goes up off the rope, but oh, Black Rain able to move away just in time, so he 
missed the leg drop, and now Black Reigns to his feet, and he knows he's got Kaz a little shaken. Oh! Doubled him over first with the boot, then the scissor stop. Here! Oh! No! That was close. He called it the lights out, and he thought he had him, but Black Reigns didn't quite have enough as Kaz got that shoulder up, and again, it's just one of those things that you just can't put a measure on, and that's the heart somebody has. But now look at this, Black Reigns got him, grabbing him by the trunk. Gonna try and take him up and over. Kaz lands on his feet and powers him down. This is his chance. One, two, got him. This is what we're talking about. Momentum for 2008, and for Kaz, it starts tonight at Final Resolution. Boy, oh boy, that's a big win for Kaz as we kick off the new year on pay-per-view. I mean, he started off in a bad way. He was being dominated early on, and it just seemed like he couldn't get his legs underneath him. But once he had that opening, it happened after that, that mid-ring collision that they had, and he was able to get his breath, able to get his bearing, and from that point on, Kaz just used that to his advantage and then was able to just keep after Black Rain to get the win. Now, what's he thinking? I don't know, but that really was a good point. We just got on track. Wait a minute. He's grabbing Go it. Going over to get Misty, the rat, Black Rain's so-called quote-unquote Arctic Fox. And we know how Black Rain feels about Misty. I mean, it, it's like an extension of his own body. He just, it, it's creepy how he, he treats that rat. Now he's laying it on the chest and he's going back over, just stomps on the chest of Black Rain and grabs the cage with Misty in it. Looks like he's taking it with him. What's this about? Kaz taking possession of the rat. Kaz has got the cage. Kaz has got Misty. Looks like he's communicating with the rat. Oh, you know he's got some wicked plans in store for it after what it's done. Look at the face of Black Rain. He's got that Darkness Falls weapon in his hand, and he's screaming now. He wants Misty back. Never got to use the weapon. Kaz leaving. Final resolution with the rat. Let's go to JB in the locker room of Kurt Angle. Can you believe it, Kurt? The gall of this guy. After all we've done for AJ Styles, and he still can't commit to that. I mean, I've seen some things in my day, but this is ridiculous. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, uh, JB, did you, did you just say we? Yeah, we. Me, you, Karen, we. <laughs> all right, let's get something perfectly clear here. Um, there is no we, okay? There's you and there's us, especially when it comes to my wife. Okay, hey, JB, you're an interviewer. That's what you do. Okay, let's make that perfectly clear. All right? Mm. Now, what are we going to do tonight if AJ Styles decide to go the other way? Well, I have a great idea. Here's oh, what you, you do. do. This is what you do. You start mm. with AJ. Okay, no. No, 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 no! JB, we are talking about the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. If you think for a second I'm about to put its future in the hands of you, or Kurt, not gonna happen. We are gonna do what we usually do at a time like this, honey. What's that? I am talking to my husband. Oh, I can't be on that. <laughs> you can't be honey, she's my wife. I'm honey, you're not honey, I'm honey. Kurt, Kurt, you worry about your match. I am gonna go take care of business. Well, well, well good. hold on, hold on a second. Karen, why is it every time you take care of business, you get us in a mess. Kurt, trust me. I know exactly how to handle AJ. Trust her. JB, go follow her. See what she's up to. Go, 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 go! Gail Kim, the first ever TNA Knockouts Champion, one of the most gifted female athletes in professional wrestling. It has been two months since she won the gold, successfully defending her title against all comers, but she is being hunted. Awesome Kong, a predator seeking her prey, stalking the champion, waiting for her moment to strike, wanting nothing more than to end the reign of Gail Kim destroying anyone who gets in her way. At final resolution, a grudge will be settled.
Resolve will be put to the ultimate test when speed and agility collide with power and ferocity. Can the reigning knockout champion defend her title against the unstoppable juggernaut? There will be no disqualifications. Only one woman can be left standing. Awesome Kong battles Gail Kim for the TNA Women's Knockout Championship in a no disqualification match next. Tonight at Final Resolution, we will present three championship bouts. And up next, the women go to battle because it's time for the TNA Knockout title match. And let's break it down with the bullet points and the tail of the tape. Awesome Kong made her name and rep here in TNA with an eye-opening victory over one Gail Kim. The difference in tonight's title match could be the no disqualification stiff. It has to favor the bigger and more violent challenger. TNA waited for over five years before introducing a women's division, ensuring the quality of talent at the highest level possible. This Gail Kim Awesome Kong feud has put the knockouts on the wrestling map. Ladies and gentlemen, final resolution continues with a no disqualification TNA Women's Knockout Championship match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, the challenger residing in Japan. She stands six feet, one inches tall and weighs 272 and three eight pounds. She is awesome. Cool. You ever seen anything like it? And when I say it, I'm talking both about Awesome Kong and the reaction from the crowd here in Orlando, Florida towards both Awesome Kong the challenger and Gail King the champion. Yes, we'll get Don's answer after the introduction of Gail. And her opponent from Tampa, Florida, she is the defending TNA Women's Knockout Champion, Gail King! Mike, you were talking about Kong as we see the champion come out. He's like that accident on the side of the road. You have to slow down and stop and see. You cannot take your eyes off of it. It doesn't matter. I mean, when you just see her come out, and anybody I talk to, look at her, come right over and not even allow Gail Kim to get in. And Gail Kim fights right back and grabs the ankle of Austin Kong, and she takes the other foot and kicks it to the rail. And finally, referee Slick Johnson says, this is a no disqualification match. What the hell am I gonna try and do here? Let's just ring the bell. Let's just turn them loose. Yes, knockout title on the line and Austin Kong. Oh, wow, vicious. Chop to the chest and nobody has more heart than Gail Kim and it's on exhibit right here. Oh, oh God, wow. we're a clothesline. Right on the concrete, right on the concrete. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa, hey, what the hell? She came over here and just like started throwing all of her stuff off of the desk. I gotta tell you, we, that's about as scared as I've ever been just looking in the face of Awesome Kong. Whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh. not this Awesome Bomb. Oh. She was gonna try and use the Awesome Bomb and put Gail Kim on a broadcast table. And did you see the kick by Gail Kim? Get that comeback started, girl. How did Gail Kim get that kick on top of her head? That's that agility of martial arts background that Gail Kim has. And then she sends her right back into the ring. And we had nowhere to go. We're connected here to these headsets. And she just, that was scary, man. Yes. Just looking up and seeing Arthur Kong that close to you. And I can't even describe how big she is up close and in person. And I remember last Thursday, Mike, and I was trying to describe to you how Gail Kim could win in a match like this. And, and talking about her heart and everything that she has, and you, you threw two words at me that kind of put the statement into effect, and that's no disqualification. And when you think about no DQ and awesome Kong, how on earth is Gail Kim going to be able to defeat her tonight and don't, retain yeah, that championship? Just don't have an answer for you in the least. And now I don't think Awesome Kong got that memo, Don, that we're hired, hardwired in here at the broadcast table. She takes Gail Kim by the hair and just tosses her across the six-sided ring, follows up the advantage, and keep in mind, folks, that's near 300 oh. pounds behind that boot that's across the windpipe and the throat of Gail Kim. And look at where Gail's positioned. She's got her back on the rope, so she's nowhere she can go. She can't maneuver. And that big boot of Awesome Kong applying that pressure. And 
Oh, just manhandles it right there and throws her into the turnbuckle and the boot again. And again, like you said, referee Slick Johnson, there's not much he can do here. So little is really known about the background of Awesome Pong. We know that she was trained over in Japan. And did you hear the rumor earlier today, Don, that an associate of Awesome Pong is in attendance here in Orlando tonight at Final Resolution? I wonder where he's from, and I wonder what that's about. No, it, well, it, it's, but it's intriguing because I want to know more. You can't help it. You want to know where she's from. Exactly. What, what her past is, you know, what her, her you know, her innermost thoughts are for that matter because if you look at her, you just see this scary beast. And, but look at Gail Kim shooting elbow after elbow. You gotta give her credit. She didn't shy down from the no disqualification rules. She wants to prove to everybody why she's such a great champion. Gail Kim connects with the boot from that middle rope. Gonna try and mount an offensive. Oh, but then the spinning oh, back fist caught her completely unaware. And Gail's in trouble here. What a shot she's that was. In the ropes. She's caught right there in the ropes. And look at this. Awesome Combs not letting up. You can see Referee Slick Johnson trying to get her loose. Thank goodness he did, or Kong may have killed her right there. Well, that spinning back fist is one of the moves that she learned while she trained over in the dojo in Japan as we see Gail Kim holding onto her knee. Oh, she's hurt bad, Mike. Uh, and, and the thing about it is when you realize that anything and everything can come into play, I hope Gail Kim can figure out a way to use that speed and stay out of harm's way, but she just got her face smashed into the steel steps. Gail Kim in serious trouble here. The TNA Knockout Championship on the line in this no disqualification match. And here comes another attempt at a comeback. A nice. series of forearm shots. Got three or four of them in, but then Awesome Kong takes that hand and just slaps her and knocks her down. It's a, it also Kong just shrugs those blows off. I mean, you're seeing Gail put that elbow right into the face. One, two, three in a row, and Awesome Kong, it's like a fly to her. I mean, she really has a uh -oh. threat Oh, no. Uh -oh. oh, no. Uh oh, no. Oh, God. God. Lee into the rail. Oh, my God. How do you stop her? Oh, my God. She just took Gail Kim with ease, lifted her up by the legs. And the impact when Gail Kim's shoulder dog went into that steel guardrail. You can't see the steel because that's just a paper poster in the way. Oh, oh now tosses her over the safety rail and into the crowd here at Final Resolution. Oh, okay. Austin Kong's wanting to humiliate her and just destroy her right in that crowd of people. Gail Kim now just trying to find some high ground, somewhere where she can use her leverage, and that's what she's doing. Kick after kick to the face, and look at it. Gail Kim is just amazing. She just won't quit, but I'll grab her by the back of the hair, and oh, right into the steps, into the crowd. Just tossed her into the steps, and for the third time, we see Gail Kim try to feed off the crowd and get fired up and get that comeback rolling, and for the third time, Paul stops her dead in her tracks, takes her into that first row up in the bleachers area. Oh, no. Oh, and no. She's on those steps. She's got nowhere to go. It's all the way. And look oh, at no, this. Kong is on the neck, on the steps. Oh, she fights it off. Got that big boot directly across the throat of Gail Kim. Referee Slick Johnson, his hands are tied. It's no disqualification. Good luck, Slick, trying to control these two. And here comes Gail again. And Gail Kim, she just, she knows she's got a scalp. She just what grabs the funny beverage bottle and just started smacking her in the head with it. Anything she can find, she's got to use right now. Well, you're right. It's no DQ, Gail Kim. Use whatever is at your disposal because you're going to need it. I can't blame her. Anything oh, not God. nailed down, use, and then, oh my God, she, she had to take her and toss her down six or seven flights of steps. And it's, it looks like deliberate awesome Kong there. She, she goes at that pace so that you feel her coming. You know what I mean? You can basically feel the ground shake. She comes. Oh, that's the way you do it. You move out of the way and you're forced to bring the wall. And look at the kick by Gail Kim. When you have a 160-pound weight advantage over your opponent, Don, you can often dictate the pace. That's what we've seen as Gail Kim again tries to get it rolling and dumps her over the rail. Back first onto the floor and entrance ramp. That's, That's gotta hurt. That shows you the strength of Gail Kim, like you said, 110 pounds of power. And she comes right off and just uses those fists together and hammers down on the shoulder. Now using that arm and pulling it behind her. That's a good move. Got it It'll make that arm numb. Yeah, got it in hammerlock position here at this point. 
as Kong goes oh. shoulder first into the steel post. Gail Kim now has got the game plan using whatever she can and uses that steel ring post. And she just slams her in it, but look at Austin Kong. She shakes it off so easily. It's unbelievable the fresh little pain she must have. Repeatedly taking the champ, Gail Kim, driving her face first into the apron. And now those big overhand clubbing lights to the chest. She's not coming over here, is she? Oh, I don't oh, she's know. going to get a steel chair. And what do you do? You can see the referee. I think he's trying to keep no. He's trying to keep Come Gail on. Kim from getting killed. Oh, but Gail Kim, you kick the chair back in the car. She got out of the way and kicked the chair back in the car. Anything and everything goes in this no disqualification TNA Women's Knockout Championship matchup. Gail back up to her feet. Kong out here at the safety rail, and Gail is headed up to the top rope. Look at her! Oh my God, she fought, but look at this! Kong caught her like it was a playing pitch and catch with a softball, and then throws her into the ring. That, that is power. That top rope cross body block to no avail. Caught in midair, and then jammed back first against the ring. Kong in, stalking her prey. Oh, you can almost sense it here, can't you? Uh, mentally, what is going to be going through Gail Kim's mind? She came off the top rope, got an unbelievable extension, and Austin Kong just handled her like it was nothing. That's got to get you mentally, Mike. That really does, but Gail Kim doesn't show it. She just keeps throwing those elbows as hard as she can. Now look at this point where there is Austin Kong. There it is! Spinning back fist again! She gets that extra torque on it by, by going 360 degrees and gets yeah. caught. 360 degrees and near 300 pounds behind that move. Here comes the awesome bomb on the way. Here it goes. Got her oh, up. Look, at him. look at that. She's so no. quick. Oh, and it gets out of the way. She would have got a face smash. Woo. Sit down, splash. Safe to say, nobody home. Gale again, shots to the back. Challenger up to her feet. Champion reigning in those rights, but doesn't look like they're having a hell of a lot of effect. Gale for the ride, sent into the turnbuckles, moved out of the way. Nice. Kong crashes into the corner, caught her with a kick. Here comes Gale to the top again. She is throwing those kicks every chance she can at the head, and it's a good move, because eventually she'll rattle her. But look at this. Oh, man, Gale. Oh, she just power bumps her in the face. Face first to the canvas. Cover, two. two. Oh, my God. A part of you almost wanted to keep the shoulder down, but she doesn't want to quit. Wow. You're right. No, there is no quit. We've talked about the heart that Gail Kim brings to TNA, how proud she is to be champ, and you can see that awesome Pong not happy at the cadence of the count from referee Slick Johnson. Oh, he says, I'm the, I'm the ref. What? Oh, boot for Slick. Look out. Now she goes after him. She didn't like the kill. She takes him up. Oh, my God. She power bombs him. Awesome bomb for referee Slick Johnson because she wasn't happy with the fact that he stopped the count at two. Here she comes again. What are we going to do without a referee in uh, here? I don't know, but she's coming right over. Get her out of and here. And now I get nervous every time she gets near this table. Now she's got a chair in hand. You get nervous. She stepped on my foot. Pushed me out of the way. Here she comes, she's got that steel chair, sliding it back in. Oh no, she's got one waiver. Instead of using it, oh ah. my God! Instead of using it on Gail Kim, she decides to give the referee another shot so Gail Kim grabs the chair from her. Oh, what a shot! Oh, what a shot to the head! Oh, what another shot, and finally, she topples the giant. And it's Gail Kim now exploiting the no disqualification stipulation of this women's knockout championship match. Gail headed to the top. Paul laid out. Fire splash off the top. Count run. One. Oh, no, she no has, but you can see that the referee slick is down. She's Gail calling for another around. referee. Here we go. Here comes Slide in, Rudy. Count. One, two, shot. Oh, she got that shoulder up. But she would have had her. Frustration. So evident on the face of the champ, Gail Kim. Oh, just this close to getting the win. Kong back up to her feet. Gail with the right hands. Then the knee to the midsection. Gail Kim just doesn't want to lose this title. I mean, and look at this though. Oh, shit. A choke slam. Choke slam to down. One, two, go. No. You've got to be kidding. She got the shoulder up the 
amazing. Absolutely no give up in the champ, Gail Kim. And yes, this capacity crowd, they have been rocking. They've been on their feet from the opening bell. And now that three, Rudy Charles just got it. She's got an awesome bomb, Rudy Charles. She's got him out. Oh, look at this. Gail uses it to her advantage. Situation. The focus of Awesome Pop momentarily distracted, trying to Awesome Bomb a second official. Rudy Charles and Gail was there to get her in that roll up, and here we go again. Well, you can see Awesome Kong is mad, and she wants to do whatever she can to inflict more damage. But Gail Kim not backing down. She can leave the ring right now. The victor, but she wants to stay there and trade blows with Awesome Kong. Security in to separate. Here come TNA knockouts. Angelina Love and Velvet Sky as well out to try and assist in keeping these two separated. Well, they've got to. I mean, Gail Kim won. She retained her title. She needs to get out of there before more damage is done. And you can see how hesitant security is. Oh. We've got to review if we can keep them apart. What went down, Don, in this knockout championship match? Take us through the replay. Well, you can see how it started. Awesome Kong went right after, using the boot, applying it, using that strength to knock her right on the concrete. What a vicious blow right there, Mike. Into the rail, but this, I think, was when Gail Kim started turning it around. It really was. That was the turning point in the match when she crashed into the wall. Gail goes high risk, but caught in mid-move by Awesome Kong. Missed that sit-out splash. Planted her face first, did the challenger. There goes referee Slick Johnson on the receiving end of that first awesome bomb. And then the steel chair came into play. And that's what you got to do. It's no DQ. Gail Kim went right after her. And then she thought she had her there. But you had to get the other referee out. Took too long. And here I thought it was over. But unbelievably, at the last split second, Gail Kim got the shoulder up. And look how she used the weight of Ruby Charles. And there, she surprised Kong and got the win. Referee Rudy Charles avoids that awesome bomb, counts three, and yes, Gail Kim retains the TNA Women's Knockout Championship, but that look on the face of Awesome Kong tells me, Don, that she not is over. not satisfied, and no, not over by a long shot. Without a doubt, an impressive win for the knockout title holder, Gail Kim, but you know what? In defeat, Awesome Kong was awesome. Let's send it to JB. Seriously, Karen, where are we going? The bathroom? The men's bathroom again? I got tipped off AJ's in here getting ready for his match. Okay, well, before we do this, yeah. breathing exercises, hello. No, no more breathing. I think you have gawked at my breasts long enough. What breasts? Oh. Come on. AJ. Karen, this is the men's bathroom. I know, what are you I know. I figured since you have such a tough decision tonight, that I might come in here and relieve you of your tension. How are you going to relieve me of my tension? I, I, got, I got an important decision to make tonight. It's killing me. AJ, oh. I have my ways. What, what, what are you saying? You, you like me? liked you. Why do you think I recruited you? Does Kurt know? No, AJ, this is between you and me. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Come on. You've lied to me before. I mean, you said I could be on both teams, and, and now look what's happened. I, I mean... AJ, I would never lie to you about something like this. And if you make the right decision tonight, there's plenty more where that came from. Oh, JB, she likes me. Oh, she really likes me. Oof. Oh, man. I'm go to the bathroom. Yeah. Abyss, you remember?
remember when I pulled you out of that prison? I told you it was your chance to start fresh, to clean the slate, that you could become a new man. I made you the monster abyss. I made you a world champion. You owe everything you are and everything you'll ever be to me, Chris. I kept my word until the day you betrayed me. And that's why the truth must come out. I can take you back to the day he was born. Uh, this is Chris Parks. He had an incredible father, but the problem was Chris's mother. Now, I told the entire world over a year ago the fact that you sat by and watched your mother shoot your own father in the back was just the tip of the iceberg. It's time for you to tell the entire world the truth. Are you ready to tell the truth, Chris? The secret lives with me, and it dies with me. Fine. If you're not going to do it, if you're not going to tell the truth, I guess I'll just have to get the job done myself. Wait a minute! Oh, my God! It's Judas Macias! Oh! Oh, my God! Oh, it's just hard to watch! Judas, you need to save something so you can tell the whole world the truth. There are more surprises to come. Vengeance will be mine. <laughs> the monster of this seeks his revenge against Judas Macias next. Father James Mitchell, tonight you unleash Judas Macias on Abyss. But is tonight the night that you unleash the secret that only you and Chris know? Crystal, I hate to flog a dead horse. After all, you can't hear them scream. But no, that's not my job. That duty belongs to Abyss, or Chris rather, and Chris alone. It is you, Chris, who's going to unleash our dirty little secret to the world. A secret that's going to change the landscape of TNA wrestling. A secret that I've held in me longer than I care to think about. And a secret that you, Chris, are scared to death of. Now, will tonight be the evening that my son Judas Macias tortures Chris to the point that he finally tells the truth? If I were a betting man, I'd say yes. But beyond all that, Chris, Remember what that crazy bitch you called a mother used to always tell you. Little boys who don't tell the truth are doomed to burn in hell. Ladies and gentlemen, the next contest is scheduled for one fall introducing first Accompanied to the ring by Father James Mitchell from the depths of hell, Judas Macias! I think our broadcast colleague, Crystal, used the proper word when she talked to Father James Mitchell. She said, your son, Judas Macias, is about ready to be unleashed on the monster of Basin. Now here comes the son of Father James making his way down the entrance ramp. And Quite a presentation and quite a look, isn't it, Don? Those, those dead eyes, those lost eyes, signifying no soul, no conscience. It's just evil. Uh, you, oh, uh, and then you see the blood and the coming out of the mouth. And it's just the presence. It, the air, like, gets heavier when they walk by. I mean, it really is evil personified in this secret that James Mitchell once told to the world, and you heard what he said, bringing Abyss's mother into play, and said you heard, you know what it's like. When you were a boy, your mother told you if you don't tell the truth, you burn in hell, and he's using anything he can to get to Abyss's mind. And his opponent stands six feet eight inches tall, and when he's 350 pounds, he is the monster. Oh! Well, I've been doing my best to try to get to the bottom of this story on two separate occasions, sit down interviews initially with Father James Mitchell, and then believe it or not, with the Monster Abyss, trying to find out what the secret is. But, you know, the words 
of Abyss really ring true here. The secret lives with me, and the secret dies with me. Father James Mitchell is, is just dying to have this known. He wants the humiliation of Abyss to be so complete. Look at Judas Macias just coming right after him. Not me just unmercilessly as he just goes right after him and Abyss caught off guard as Judas Macias doesn't stop. Oh, what a stifled shot. Oh, you're right. Right on the monster Abyss, even before the opening bell. Positions him in the corner. The series of high edge chops to the chest, but Abyss is able to reverse. Shoot him off into the corner. Macias connects with the elbow as Abyss charges in. Clothesline missed. Macias then on the receiving end of that big clothesline from six foot eight, 350 pounds of Abyss. And Abyss now, he's got the momentum back his way. And when you're that big, and we know he can turn it around in a hurry, but look at Judas Macias. He's got a game plan. He realized he has a speed advantage, but then again, he lacks one thing, and that's that height and that power that Abyss has, and man, he put him up into the air, into the rafters. Oh, you're right, and then follows up by clotheslining Macias over the top rope and down to the arena floor. Here has set final resolution. You know, you take one look at Judas Macias, and yet in comparison to the 6'8", 350, Abyss, no question the size edge that he has, but Judas Macias is a big guy, probably in the neighborhood of about 245, 250 pounds. And he's, he's all muscle, and it's just, he's just built together so well. But one thing about the, the James Mitchell situation with Judas Macias, when, when Abyss was with Mitchell, you always felt that internal struggle. You could always, you could always feel it as Abyss taking it out on Judas Macias now, putting him in the steel step. With Judas Macias, you can tell that James Mitchell's in total control, and whatever game plan they have, they're completely on the same page. There is a loyalty there that is perfect. I've got to agree with you. Back to the days of Mitchell aligned with Abyss, there always did seem to be that, that underlying tension between the two, as now, oh my, Abyss taken down, put on his back, and Macias repeatedly taking the leg, taking the knee of Abyss, and wrapping it around that steel post. He started to grab the chain that Abyss breaks down, and I think he wanted to, to tie the legs together or something so that he, he had him where he couldn't move. Referee Andrew Thomasville told him, don't even think about it. And oh, but you mentioned it. He used the knee, put that knee to the ring post, and look at Macias. Just put the boot right to the knee. I think he realizes the weak point that he's got on him right now. Yeah, whether it's a weak point going in or not, it is at this point. And there's no question that no. Judas Macias is going to focus and direct his total offensive game plan, his strategy against that injured knee of a bit. I mean, and he's... He, decides to go for either one. He went on one side, now the other. I mean, look at this. He knows that he can keep those legs out from underneath Abyss, then he can't get that leverage that he uses so well. Look at him. Just goes right after those legs. Abyss makes his way back up to his feet, but you can see that he's favoring the injured knee, and Macias is on him like a full court press. Kicks directly into the knee. Big shot to the head. Now he's got him into the corner, and referee Andrew Thomas trying to maintain some law and order here, and doing a pretty Pretty darn good job to this point, but boy, it's tough to stop Judas Macias. Well, I, how did you to stand there and look him up into his eyes, those dead eyes? I mean, it's just so creepy, and it's it's got to be something that you're afraid of. But look at this. Oh, man, Judas Macias was going for something, but Abyss able to take him up and put him down, but look how Abyss crumples. As the legs have been damaged, the knees have been damaged by Judas Macias, they couldn't stay on his feet. I can only presume he was going to go for some kind of a face plant. The way he jumped into the air, going to try and take him down face first. But sure, right, the reversal and the counter by the monster Abyss nearly took perfection at that point as we see Abyss looking underneath the ring and Father James Mitchell possibly one step ahead of the monster. Oh, yeah, he's got that bag of tacks or glass or whatever it is that Abyss generally has in there. He's, he's a step ahead and he's got it. Now you see yep. Abyss. Focused on James Mitchell, he wants it, chasing him. And one thing you don't want to do is turn your back on Judas Macias, and he just went right for the back of the knee. Just chop blocked took him. It out. He did. Just clipped him from behind. What have we said, Don? In the years of watching Abyss here in TNA, that could be a negative. That tunnel vision that he has, and that really came back to haunt him at that point. 
He did. He got focused on the one thing. He saw James Mitchell taking his security blanket there in the tax. And then you see Judas Macias throwing him into the steel steps. He catches him, and he catches him with that knee again. You saw him jump over the top of it. Yeah, it was, it was an effort by Abyss, I think, to try and avoid the steps, but he clipped that, that top corner of that steel ring step on the way with the previously injured knee, and now Macias gonna roll him in and, and try and put him away here. Yeah, one thing I've noticed, like I said, Macias, he, he's going for whichever knee's closer to him. He just, he's not picky on how he does it. Now look at him go up top as you see Abyss struggling to his feet, trying to, to see if he can fight through the pain. Oh, man, he caught him in there. He's going for the choke slam, but look at Macias. He fights it off quick, not letting him get up, but what a fool. Turn him inside out. Big boot takes Macias, powers him down to the canvas, and while Macias is in the corner, 350 pounds on the way. Oh, man, just squashed him right against the turnbuckles. Here he comes back at him again. Oh, that's such a wicked hit as he, he comes in and turns around the last moment and takes that big broadside of his and just rams it right into the head of Macias that snaps his head back into the turnbuckles, and you can see how dazed he is. And he is oh. dazed to the point that he walks right into that side One, slam. Two. Leg foot, no. I don't know how he got his shoulder up on that. I mean, that just, he's been jarred, and you can see Judas Macias trying to focus and trying to, to figure out a way right now to stop this this entourage of, of off offense that Abyss has. And now Abyss coming around, Circling looking for something. Side area. Looks like he's headed over to try and pick up a steel chair and put that chair into play. Referee Andrew Thomas, who has done his best to try to keep these two under control, is warning him not to bring that chair into the ring. Andrew Thomas trying to stop it. But, you know, when, when, like you mentioned, when Abyss gets focused on something, he has that tunnel vision, and you're not going to tell him no about anything. He's not even listening to Andrew Thomas. He's setting that chair up so he can get the effective damage out of it that he wants. And you can see he's threatening referee Andrew Thomas. And Andrew Thomas, you got to give him credit, Mike. He has stood up to both of these monsters. But doing his best to try and stand up to Abyss and try and get that chair unwedged from the corner, but not having much success as, again, the tunnel vision of Abyss comes back to haunt him. That delay in following up the offensive advantage that he has sees Judas Macias go right back to the offensive and the knife edge chop, and now he's got him by the head and by the hair and in a tough position against the ring ropes. And look at these rights, one quick shot after another, bam, bam, bam. I'll tell you what I was impressed with was the timing of Judas Macias playing possum, waiting, 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 knowing the fist would make his way over to him, and when he did, he turned on him so quick that he was there, oh! Smart move by Abyss! Macias tried the float over attempt, no success with that because of the kick from Abyss, and then the monster takes him and flings him head first directly into that steel chair that was wedged between the top and middle rope. Andrew Thomas is conflicted in what to do here, but when those two are in the ring, sometimes you have to give a little leeway and choke slam. Here it is. Oh, one, two, Abyss. Oh, man, Judith Macias got the shoulder up with a split second. Boy, that is impressive. Duly impressive to me as we see Father James Mitchell come back down toward the ringside area with. Is that, that's a, he's got a black bag of something in yes. front of it. It's bigger that's a, than. That's a different bag than we had out here earlier, for it, sure. It, it really is. It, there you can see it. It's, it's taller. I don't know what's in it, but you know, whatever it is, it's brought out here to inflict damage on Abyss. Abyss outside the ring. Macias laid out inside, and now. He's looking to get some kind of a weapon going underneath the ring, and it's a pick. He grabs the chair. Oh, look at that. It's the chair wrapped in barbed wire. Oh, man. He's got the chair. Now, what does Andrew Thomas do in this situation? He's looking on in horror, but you don't want to find yourself in front of that as he's got that barbed wire chair. And no. I mean, th th there's a point where you, you give him leeway, Don, yes. but at the same time here, the barbed wire chair has gone way over the line. And you can see Andrew Thomas takes it away from him, and he's pointing to Abyss to back off, and he's putting the chair, and yeah. he's got to be very careful with all that barbed wire. You can see Andrew Thomas yeah. scared on how he handles it, but look at this. But see it oh. reads it with a chair shot as Andrew Thomas is getting rid of the barbed wire chair. Violent shot to the head of Abyss with the steel chair, and Macias is not done. He's going back outside. Didn't think we'd see this. Macias headed to the top rope as Father Mitchell looks on, and then the 
the splash off the top. He does the frog splash on top of a bench that looked like it took some air out of him. Does he have enough? Oh, he doesn't. And I think that's exactly what happened. He lost some of his air. He didn't have enough strength to put the pressure on Abyss to get the pin as Abyss able to get the shoulder up, and you can see his hand as he's trying to wheel himself to his feet. Abyss tries to get back rolling on the offensive. Macias will have none of it. The boots, the punches to the head, springs off the ropes, and Black Hole Slam! Black Hole Slam! But look at this! Father Dave Mitchell has referee Andrew Thomas distracted, and he's got him pinned! But all this is doing is buying time for Dennis Macias as Andrew Thomas falls to James Mitchell's tactics. And now you can see a bit pulling James Mitchell in. Well, that patented finishing move, the Black Hole Slam, not able to get him to win, but now he's going to get a little payback here on Father James Mitchell. Abyss has got him in trouble. Oh, you can see James Mitchell pleading for his life as Abyss has him with the left hand. Now look at this. He's got Macias with the right. Andrew Thomas said it looks like Did you see that? Thomas trying to get Mitchell out of the ring. Some kind of a, a mist or something, wasn't it? Into the ice that blinded yes, the he did. He threw it and then oh. he sent it straight to hell on top of the barbed wire oh chair. Oh, my God. Straight to hell. The finishing move. Look at the look at the body, the face of a mist, the blood flowing out of his arm. Oh, the no. The blood from One, his head. two, done. Oh, my God. I'm finished. Here is your winner, Judas Macias. Mike, you are right. He sprayed that mist. You could see it there dripping out of his mouth into the face of Abyss, and he was able to use that to his advantage. And while James Mitchell had a hold of the ref, he was able to take him in that move that he called straight to hell right on the barbed wire chair. And the blood dot flowing from the head, from the face, I believe down the arms as well of Abyss, as Father James Mitchell Judas, has grab with that ingrate. So, Chris, are you ready to finally tell the truth? Trying to get him to tell the secret. You can see Abyss just shaking his head. I'm going to give you one more chance. Are you ready to tell the truth once and for all, Chris? He said he would take it to his grave. Look at him. I mean, he's got to be close to there right now. Well, I am a man of my word, and I promised you that little boys who don't tell the truth are going to burn in hell. What on earth? Burn in hell. He comes out and he grabs that bag that he brought in while you while Macias is stomping on the head of the monster. Andrew Thomas trying to get some kind of order. And look at this, oh he's my. got... I mean, it looks like a, a gasoline container to me. Oh no, he's got the gas can. And, he hands oh, it to on. Judas Macias, and oh, this is now, just... come on. No. No, and oh, oh no, oh, he's God. pouring it all over. And think about what that's got to feel like going in those cuts, and he's just drenching it. Did you smell that? Just, oh, you could smell, you smell the gasoline. The fumes here at Final Resolution. No, somebody oh. get out of here and stop this, and you can see a bit screaming in pain. What's Mitchell have in his hands? Oh no! He's got the man now. The security coming get out in of here! Drugs. Get these get security in here to oh. stop this! And look at this as they stop him in time as he was gonna light the man. And man, that security came in all at once. And boy, they had tunnel vision as they went right after James Mitchell to keep him from lighting it. Boy, just at the point where Father James Mitchell was going to take the matches and set Abyss on fire, security fills up the ring. Oh, to prevent that accident. To the back, Crystal with Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash, since last month at Turning Point, it seems as though you and Samoa Joe haven't really gotten off on the right foot since he made some derogatory comments about your friend, Scott Hall. But it seems as in the last couple of weeks that you guys have made amends, basically since you sacrificed yourself to help Joe in the heavyweight gauntlet match. You know, that's the kind of guy I am. I mean, uh, smack you one day, kiss you the next. Um, it's a crazy world we're in this professional wrestling gig. And, uh, you know, nothing's for sure. And, uh, I mean, I know that, and Joe knows that. So, uh, I mean, anything can happen, it usually does. So, uh, going with that, I mean, what do you, you know, what can you say? So, what exactly does all that mean? 
Well, what that means is that uh, I'll do what I always do, which is put asses in seats, win championship belts, and uh, make a ton of money. Sounds good. What are you doing later? I don't know. I'm kinda hungry. Cool. Mm -hmm. You're pathetic! You're an embarrassment! That's what we're used to. Tell me one time you have done anything right since I hired you. Wait, shut up! I'll tell you. Never! It's hard to watch this. That's Miss Jackie. She's a veteran. You don't treat veterans like that. You don't talk down to people like that. You see Robert Rude talking to people like that? You are a pathetic loser! Do me a favor and quit. Well, Charmel comes right after Robert Rude! You know what? I'm sick of this! Now, you don't know me, and I don't know you. But one thing I do know is that is no way to treat a lady. I can't believe this. Charmel is putting Robert Rude in his place. I don't see any ladies out here. You want to talk about being a lady? A lady doesn't go work a street corner in Texas to find her future husband. I'm talking about Booker T, yeah. That's where he found you, right, Charmel? Booker T might be the in your relationship, but Robert Rude is the boss in his relationship. So do yourself a little favor, Charmel. Get out of my face before I do something you're gonna regret. Here comes Booker T rolling into the ring and look how quickly Robert Rude gets out of Dodge. Robert Rude, not such a big man, not such a tough guy now, is he? If Booker T skank of a wife Charmel wants to get in the ring and get in Robert Rude's face, then I say, Let's make it official, because you see, Booker, Robert Roode has no problem slapping the taste out of any woman's mouth. Oh, that isn't going to go well with Booker T. I came here to make an impact in the middle of that ring. See, I got a contract to wrestle, not my wife. My wife came here for moral support. You see, in this Robert Roode, you see, he can treat a lady any way he wants. See, that ain't my fist, but I treat my lady like a queen. You dig what I'm saying? Robert Roode. Ms. Brooks face Booker T and Charmel in mixed tag team action. Next. Booker T, Charmel, tonight you face Robert Roode and Ms. Brooks in a mixed tag match. Now, Booker, I've got to ask you this. Are you concerned for Charmel's safety? I mean, she's not a wrestler. You damn skippy. She's not a wrestler. See, but this is my queen. This is my wife, and whatever she wants, she gets. But let me tell you something, Bobby Roode. You think I got a temper. You think I got a side of me that you really don't want to see? Well, let me tell you something. My little woman right here, this little alley cat, she got a side that you really don't want to see, and now you got to deal with that tonight. Charmel, any last thoughts? I'll do my talking out in the ring. Good. Okay. And I know you heard that, did you? Hey, baby, hold up. I heard it. Whew, it's going to be ugly. with the following mixed tag team contest. And it is scheduled for one fall, introducing team number one from Wall Street in Manhattan, New York, Miss Brooks and Robert Wood. Mixed tag team action. Up next, here at Final Resolution, and I want to say kudos and hats off to the TNA ring crew for doing a great job, Don, during that last interview. They were able to get out here and, and get that gasoline so fast taken out of place and a new ring put in, a new canvas put into place for this mixed tag team matchup. Robert Rude, the man who has spent the past year plus here in TNA just totally berating Miss Brooks and there she is. There she is, that stalker, that, that number one fan of his that's always somewhere, finds a way to be in this building every time Robert Rude's here. And you look at the reluctance on Miss Brooks there, Mike, and here's the thing, you have one woman in Charmel, she's dying to get in that ring. And, and slap the taste out of the mouth of Robert Roode. And then you've got Miss Brooks, who has no reason in her mind to be out there. She has nothing against Booker T, and surely nothing against Charmel. And you dig it, sucker! And their opponent's team number two from Houston, Texas, Charmel and Booker T! When TNA, newest free agent superstar acquisition, inked the deal with Total Nonstop Action Wrestling in late 2007. 
I don't believe that Booker T. Don had any idea that Charmel would be getting physically involved in a mixed tag team match. And he was pretty outspoken in terms of, of being against it. But Charmel said that she was ready to get into battle, get ready to fight, all because of the way that Robert Roode treats women. From the moment that Booker T. Walked down that ramp for the first time. Robert Roode has made it his mission. His mission to make life a living hell for Booker T. He basically come out and said, you're not coming in. You're not moving me down the ladder. And this thing just keeps escalating week after week, day after day, to where Robert Roode wasn't satisfied with it just being about him and Booker T. He decided to get Charmel involved any way that he can to try to humiliate Booker T and bring him down a notch in his mind is what Robert Roode's doing, but there comes a point where you cross the line, and Robert Roode seems to cross it so many times with his treatment of women and the way he treats Miss Brooks in particular. You know, TNA management is gonna do everything within their power, Don, to improve the TNA wrestling product. The signing of Booker T, a great move in that step, and yes, Robert Roode, from the moment he arrived, as you mentioned, I think is upset that he's got to maybe share the spotlight, so to speak, with Booker T. Robert Roode feels like he was here, he was established in TNA. One of those guys that did everything within his power to try to put TNA on the map, and he doesn't want Booker T coming in and stealing his thunder. Let's keep an eye on Miss Brooks and see if Robert Roode has that control over it, if she'll do his bidding in this ring if she'll do what Robert Roode wants her to do. And that, of course, is gonna be to, to handle Charmel when Charmel's in the ring. We know one thing, Booker T, when you involve his wife, when you involve his queen, oh, you're taking personal to a whole nother level. You hear the crowd with the Booker T chance as Booker T gets set to square off with Robert Roode to open this mixed tag team matchup here at Final Resolution. Feeling out process here in the opening minute. Robert Roode complaining to referee Earl Hebner about Booker T. And it's pretty obvious that Booker's already in the mind of Robert Roode. Oh, great slap by Booker. Follow up shot in the corner, series of forearms. Whatever mind game Robert Roode was trying to play, let me tell you something, that man's too experienced to fall for it. But look at the punches. Hey, one thing about Robert Roode, and let's not, but we're not gonna look past him. We know he's a rising star. We know he's got unbelievable talent. I mean, we've known that ever since he was a member of Team Canada. We don't like his methods, we don't like his ways, but we'll never, ever deny his ability. And he is somebody that, and, and you gotta look at what Robert Roode's doing. He's using this so that he can let the world know what he's about. And if he can beat the likes of Booker T, well, then he can't be denied. Knife edge chop in the corner is the decisive blow that takes Roode off of his feet, drops him down to the mat. Charmel from outside, yet yeah, cheering on her husband, her man Booker T. The reversal is Booker shot off, able to float over on Rude. Oh, oh wow. and then light up his chest with a chop, measure him, set him up, and another. He just has those long arms, and it, it's like he can get that extension. And when he connects, you can feel the vibration all through the impact zone, and the crowd responds to every one of them. Now look at him. Oh, he was trying to suplex him, it looked like, but Robert Roode able to get out from behind it and put the boot right to the gut. Ooh, a vicious kick into the stomach of Booker T. I have to agree with you. We've never denied the athletic ability of Robert Roode, the fact that he has such incredible potential to make his way to the top here in TNA. You saw it on display there, able to float over on that suplex, but then he goes for the easy way out. Cheap shot against the ring ropes, and as you mentioned, Don, and as we had heard from Miss Brooks in recent weeks on Impact, she has nothing against Booker T and Charmel, and you saw, even though Booker was over there in the corner, Miss Brooks wasn't going to get physically involved in any way. No, I, I, it's obvious that she just is not going to do it. Oh, wow. What Robert, DDT. He got it straight into the face, and he went for the pit of Tim, but look at Booker T. That sends a message. Gets up, but you can see. Well, that was a wake-up call, wasn't it, it for was. Booker T? His eyes wide open like, whoa! You better not take Robert Root for granted. You better not take Robert Root for granted. And I like the style of Robert Root to the point that even though we're still early in the match, boy, he went for that big power move, that impactful DDT, got right on him for the pin and almost won the match here in the opening minutes. Kind of shocked Booker T right there, but that's what Booker T does. 
that spin kick, and he hit it perfectly. And you can see he knocked Robert Roode down on his back. And look at the look in Robert Roode's eyes. He's glazed right now. A dazed and confused Robert Roode shot up into the ropes. Booker on target with the kick. The follow cover. One, the leg two. Hook. Referee Hefner down for the two count only. You know, I thought he might steal one right there. You could just see that look earlier in the eyes of Robert Roode. It's like, sometimes you just get caught so flush. It just doesn't matter. I mean, you, you see it happen all the time. Robert Roode, though, trying to get to his feet, but nice, nice knee into the gut, and then a knee up to the head. Look at him, just those long legs of Booker T just using him to perfection. Now, Rude has no idea at that point where those knees are coming from. Catches him in the gut, catches him in the, high in the head, and Rude goes for the knife edge chop, and oh, judging by the reaction there of Booker, and as, as well from that one, that one rocked Booker against the ropes. Booker puts on the brakes, doubles him over, knee planted into the midsection. Rude for the ride. Oh, boy, barely got over that time. Parches right back at him, and drop kick, drop kick. Follow one, him. two. No. Got to give Robert Root credit there, able to stay on his feet, and then he came right back. And I think Booker T was surprised he was on his feet, and that's why he caught into that drop kick. And look at it, you can see Miss Brooks putting her hand up, I, almost sending the message to Charmel and Booker T that I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take part in this. And you can see Charmel concerned, looking on as Booker T is stuck over in the corner. But one thing about it, Miss Brooks turning her back, not helping Robert Root out at all. I mean, she's so conflicted because of the business agreement that they have, because, quite honestly, of the financial situation that Miss Brooks is in. She's forced to do the bidding, the dirty work of Robert Rudy, even though she really doesn't have any personal grievances or grudges with Booker T and, and, and Charmel. And did he just tell him to get down to the floor? Yeah, it's like if you're not going to help out and be a part of this and get off the ring apron and sit her down as she goes down. But, oh, wait a minute. Right there, she does. We just talked the about this. You can see she's conflicted, but she did grab the ankles of Booker T. Because Robert Rude would hold that over her head. I think in her mind, Don, that's the last thing that she wanted to do. Survival instinct. Exactly. She did. It was survival instinct. And you could see it. You, it was one of those things where you know you don't want to do it, but you feel you have to. And, and, and you could see that look right there in her eyes. But Robert Rude now has momentum because of that move by Miss Brooks. And oh, what a backbreak. The backbreaker across the knee. And now holding Booker in place and then just powers him right down and goes for a quick pin. That's a unique move out of the back break. Robert Roode, oh. very innovative, and now he takes that knee right back into the back that he used it on earlier, and now pulling back on that neck, just applying the, the pressure and the pain. And you can see Charmel, she knows Booker T's in trouble. Mid-ring reverse chin lock applied by Roode. Crowd again with the chance for Booker T to try and get him rolling in this matchup. Vertical base for Booker T gets him back on his feet. Right, left, chop. Off the ropes, gonna try and shoot Rude across and does. Went for the spin kick, but Rude hooked that top steel cable. Oh, and then Booker went for the kick and got hung up on the top rope. Oh, uh, he was mad that he missed it, so he went after it again, and Robert Rude played it perfectly. And you can see, by staying on those ropes, he guided Booker T over to him, and now Booker T down off the, out of the mat, and he's over there by the rail, and he's trying to get up, and now Charmel Getting back up on the ring apron, but Robert Roode gets right out after Booker T. Boy, he has oh. just taken such quick advantage of the situation here. Taking Booker, sending him back first against the side of the ring, then rolling him inside, and a follow-up pin leads to another near fall here. And we have seen Robert Roode with probably somewhere in the neighborhood, Donna, four or five two counts in this match, coming so close to getting the pin on Booker T. And Outside of the involvement of Ms. Brooks with that cheap shot, the ladies have yet to get into this matchup. No, Charmel, and I think Booker T is a part of him doesn't want to go over there. Even as a last resort, he doesn't want to tag in Charmel. But look how Robert Rue continues to put that knee into the back. The knee into the back any way that he can. He knows he's, he's hit a nerve there, and he just applied that pressure. Look at how that knee is just sucking into the back of Booker T as he pulls on the chin. Booker back up to a knee, and now back up to his feet. The elbows to the midsection, the first moves to try and get him started on his comeback. Right hand at the side of the head of Rude, rocks him in the corner. Gonna try and shoot him across now, and does. Back first into the corner, turnbuckle. Rude able to get the boot up. Now positions up on that top corner, turnbuckle, and now from the middle rope. Here comes Rude. Oh, and snap the neck off.
off the second rope. Beautiful timing on it. In. One, two, bo Booker T used the leg strength to kick out of that at the last second. I'll be honest, I thought it was over. I thought it was over, and I think everybody here in the Impact Zone thought it was over. And the series of Robert Roode near falls has certainly been the story of this mixed tag team match as Booker has been on the verge of defeat a half a dozen times to the corner with Booker oh. defenseless and Ms. Brooks with the open hand slap and there's the close up look at her face and you can see that she's not happy but she had to in her mind do it because of that power and control all relating to financial matters that Robert Roode holds over her. I'll tell you one thing it's gonna do is she's not gonna have a friend in Charmel. Charmel's not gonna care. Booker T's not gonna care that she doesn't wanna do it. She said no. Oh. She said I'm not gonna do it that time. And, and he, there, there was he a tagged tag. her. He tagged her in. Referee Earl Hendricks said in his anger, he absolutely tagged her in. And now Miss Brooks is legal. Hey, here here comes Charmel. Charmel gets right on Ms. Brooks in the middle of the ring. And look at Charmel right now. And then Ms. Brooks quickly turns it around on her. Ms. Brooks has more experience in this kind of a situation. Well, it's the anger that Charmel had building up in her, building up in her, building up in her. And you can see Robert Rue coming in, pulling Charmel off and giving the advantage. And Booker T had his back turned and didn't realize it. Trying to get his breath, trying to get his composure. And Robert Rue comes out and just throws him into that rail and now Miss Brooks in total control in the ring. Well, you're right. Booker was out on the floor trying to get that win back, trying to clear up his head. And Rude takes him down. Now Charmel shot off. Rude from outside hooks the ankle. The leg of Charmel. Miss Brooks charges across. He's got Roll up one, two, two wow. count only. Oh, and then a collision. The head of Miss this. Brooks collides. Shut Charmel down. got the pin. Here are your winners, Charmel and Booker T. Charmel and Booker T get the victory in the mixed tag team match. Great timing. Charmel able to shoot Ms. Brooks across. The contact made, the heads collide, and bam, on her like that for the three count. Almost a little too smart for his own good. Robert Root had everything in control. And now Ms. Brooks realizes. Uh oh. Not only. Look at this. Look at this. She knows she cost Robert Root the victory and knows there's going to be hell to pay. And I can hardly stand to watch him berate her like this. Again, the verbal berating continues as Robert Root is right in the face of Ms. Brooks. And, ah! She finally did it. She, she finally did it. She just couldn't take it any longer. And listen to the call there behind her. And now Robert Root, oh my God, he's grabbed her by the hair. And he's trying to manhandle her. But look at Ms. Brooks. It's that frustration coming out of Charmel. That look on her face. She cannot believe what Robert Root is doing. And here now. she comes. Charmel in here. What? 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 What, what the hell did Bobby just do? Oh my God! What the hell was Bobby thinking? I mean, I, I don't think that could be intentional. I, I believe, I, I, I believe he, he probably thought it was a referee. I, la ladies and gentlemen, this is, I, I, this is totally inexcusable. I, I, I can tell you, Don, and, and everybody at home, I can tell you that TNA nor any of its partners would condone the actions of Robert Roode. I assure you, TNA management, they've mandated no male on female violence. This is not gonna be tolerated under any circumstances. Don, the concern on the face, the shock on the face of Don West he took his headset off to check on the condition of Charmel. The, the hell were you? We tried to get him off. We tried to get him off. Calm down. We hit him off. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. It's all right. She's weak. Come on. Worst moments in... TNA history, this, I just cannot even describe.
man, I cannot believe that hit Charmel just took from Robert Rude. What a yeah, jerk. Yeah, 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 it's God, terrible. It's a tragedy. Let's go in. Ask me some questions. Let's go. I got things to do. Okay, okay. Tonight's your night, Christian. Christian Cage has the opportunity to win the TNA World Heavyweight title for the third time. But all you've got to do is beat Kurt Angle. So the question is, do you need any or should I say, do you have any help tonight? Let me make one thing perfectly clear to you and to everybody else. The Instant Classic never did, doesn't, and never will need anybody's help. You can say what you want about the champ, but with AJ Styles, I saw more potential in him than I've ever seen in any performer in all my life. That's why I say the things that I do to AJ. That's why I do the things that I do to AJ, because I want him to reach that potential. It's called tough love. So now tonight you have Karen Angle, trying to seduce AJ, coming up, trying to slobber all over his neck like some cougar in heat, trying to make things more clear for AJ. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Karen. The only thing you made clear to AJ was that up close and through all that makeup, you're really starting to show your age. It's quite hideous, actually. And you know something else, Karen? You can't even please your own husband. You can't even make him... <laughs> it's like this, Karen. The only thing that's going to be hard tonight is when you have to slink back to your husband and explain to him why your little seduction didn't work. Why you have to slink back to your husband and explain to him why AJ finally realized where his loyalties lie. And when you have to go back to your husband and tell him why there's a brand new world heavyweight champion for the third time and his name is Christian Cage. If you don't know... Now you know. It's Mike and Don back at ringside, and we're going to reference the confidence, obviously, of the, the challenger, Christian Cage. But I just got to talk about Charmel here for a second and let you know that, ladies and gentlemen, we will endeavor to get you an update on the condition of Charmel. TNA trainers attending to her. Boy, that was quite a shock from it, Robert Root. It just, you just felt that Robert Rude was going to go too far at some point, and, and to see that, and... Um, yeah, accidental it, or not, we don't it tolerate was awful. that. We saw earlier the drinking contest. We saw uh, James Storm and his, his own devious ways take the lead in part one. James Storm, Eric Young, the DCS, the Drinking Championship Series. Here's part two, check it out. Edward, 40 hands? Are you kidding me? You can't get up from this table? You can't spill your beers? You can't even go pee? That's a dangerous game. Crystal, it's I'm my going to stop for this. I'm so itchy. Hey, look, look, look. Oh, 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 pinch it for me. I got to pee. Pinch it. Oh, oh, oh. What? Pinch it. 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 Hey, right? Hey, hey, hey. I'm calling an ambulance. Guys, this is ridiculous. James, did you spill? Did you No. What is that? What is that? They are the most decorated tag team in professional wrestling history. With their size and brute strength, they have mowed down every opponent that has stood in their way. Together, with the help of Johnny Devine, they have seized the X Division title. And now they have one goal. Why are we going to destroy the X Division? Because we can. But the X Division will not go down without a fight. Led by the Motor City Machine Guns and X Division champion Black Machismo as they try to retrieve the title and the pride of the X Division. This is going on long enough. Give me my Black Division title. In the match they made famous, Ultimate X, the most dynamic, high flying daredevil match in TNA today. This is the hand of vengeance. This is a hand that is going to. Slap the taste out of your mouth. At final resolution, it will be six men. The X Division title hanging high above the ring. And all you have to do to gain possession is reach out and take it. There is no way in hell that me and my brother Devon are competing in an ultimate X match at final resolution. It's the return of Highwire, Death Defense.
defying madness as Team 3D and Johnny Divine take on Black Machismo, Jay Lethal, and the Motor City Machine Guns in the Ultimate X next. It's Mike and Don back at ringside here at Final Resolution and Walby. TNA Ring Crew sets up the structure for Ultimate X. That's our next matchup. Here at the big pay-per-view event, Don, we've got to talk about the, the story behind Ultimate X, the role of the X Division in this match, in this rivalry, as well as the role that Team 3D, Brother Devon and Brother Ray play against the X Division competitors. Well, they put the X Division in their sights and they've done everything they can to humiliate them. But one thing I like about this matchup, it was a matchup that the Motor City Machine Guns were able to win in a match. They were able to name this match and they pulled down the ultimate X out of the pole. And it is a match that is definitely in their favor. But you think back of last week on Impact and you wonder the damage that Brother Ray and Brother Demon did on their hands and how that's going to affect them in climbing those ropes. They may have to depend on the X Division champion, Jay Lethal, to do a lot of that work because I don't know how damaged Chris Saban and Alex Shelley are. I really believe that will be the key factor in this matchup. We saw it on impact, premeditated attack without question. They knew exactly what they were doing, their game plan, their strategy. Yes, it played out to perfection. The injuring of the hands of Chris Saban and Alex Shelley, the Motor City Machine Guns, you're right, Black Machismo, Jay Lethal. He's probably gonna be the guy that they rely on. You look at the other side and all this braggadocia from Brother Ray about how Team 3D, how he and Brother Devon are gonna be able to climb up the steel structure, take down the X Division Championship belt that they have possession of. I think it's all a bunch of BS and I think they'll rely on Johnny That's Devine right. to do much of the climbing and much of the athletic endeavors in this Ultimate X matchup. Again, Black Machismo, Jay Lethal, is the official reigning TNA X Division title holder. He is the champion. Possession of the belt is what's at stake. So technically, while this is not a championship match, so to speak, the title, the possession of that X Division title, that's what's going to be on the line, and that's what's going to be hanging from those steel cables that form the X 15 feet high above the six-sided ring. You know, you, you mentioned it. Johnny Devine is going to be called on to do the climbing. He's going to be called on to do that while Brother Ray, Brother Devon will obviously be the muscle. They'll be the ones to try to make sure that there's no way Shelly Saban or, of course, the X Division champion Jay Lethal can climb up there and get that down. And, you know, what an advantage that they have by having uh, Johnny Devine to do that while they can way lay down on the bottom. But you brought it up. It is not, it's about possession of this belt. And what I like about the Motor City Machine Guns and Jay Lethal is they have taken this personal. They have taken this personal. They're not backing down from Team 3D in any way. They want to get that belt back on their own. Well, Ultimate X, no question, Don. It is up next here at Final Resolution. I want to thank the guys in the truck. I want to thank David Sahadi, Keith Mitchell, for just giving me the update on the condition of Charmel. TNA trainers have taken Charmel to a local hospital. The early report that we have is that they fear a jaw problem with Charmel after that shot from Robert Roode. And obviously, we'll update you as soon as we get word. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a six-man tag team Ultimate X match to the Durban possession of the X Division title belt. Introducing team number one, <laughs> first from New York City, Brother Ray and Brother Devon. They are team 3D. And their tag team partner is Johnny Devine. Well, here we go. Brother Ray, Brother Devon, team 3D, yes, joined by the X Division Trader. Johnny Devine making their way down the entrance ramp. I see that Brother Ray's already brought a microphone with him, so I'm guessing that we're gonna get another one of the famous Brother Ray monologues prior to this matchup. You see that Brother Devon, there's the championship belt on. Devon's got that X Division title belt that rightfully belongs to Black Machismo, Jay Lethal. And they're gonna hang that belt from the top of Ultimate X, and you're right, Brother, Brother Ray obviously wanting to spew some more of his hot air as he has that microphone in his hand, and you know that. So the time has finally come for this match. Me and my brother, Devon, have been training for a very 
very long time. We are in the best shape of our careers. Personally, I can tell you that I have the speed of a gazelle. My brother, Devon, can move around like a Black Panther. Oh, my brother, power to the people. And as you can see, Brother Divine was made for a match like this. The whole world knows that Team 3D is the greatest tag team that ever existed. The whole world knows that we are the greatest hardcore wrestlers in the world. The whole world knows that SoCal Val is nothing but a two-bit tramp. Oh, what about that? Life? What about that doing anything? Nonsense. The whole world knows we're the masters of the table match. The whole world knows that we're the masters of TLC. The world knows that we're the best they've ever seen. Where's the ref? Get in here, ref. You shut up. Listen to me. Johnny Devine placing the X Division belt up I, I, there. I, I, you sure Brother hey, Ray's done? Rudy, get out of Get over here. I was hoping. Listen, you Wishful better thinking. keep your eyes open, because you know damn well that the machine guns and lethal are nothing but, you okay, brother? Nothing but little cheating bastards. You keep your eyes open. You may. Yeah. Yes. And their opponents first, from Elizabeth, New Jersey, the TNA X Division Champion, Black Machismo, Chilipo! He's fighting to regain possession of that X Division Championship belt, quite honestly, at the same time, he's also fighting for the pride, the reputation of the entire X Division here in TNA, the division with no limit. And his tag team partners from Detroit, Michigan, Chris Saban and Alex Shelley, the Motor City Machine Guns. And here they come. Here come the guns. And here come Black Machismo charging their way down the ramp. And Ultimate X is underway. Well, they come right after them to bring the fight to Team 3D. And that's a smart thing to do. They know at their speed that they can end this in a hurry. If they can get Team 3D outside of this ring and injured, one of these three can scurry up there and bring this down. But you gotta watch out for Johnny Devine. We know how easily he can get up there. We just saw him do it. And Brother Ray and Brother Devon are gonna do whatever they can to try to make that happen. Yes, the innovative match. Ultimate X is underway. Take down the X Division Championship belt. Win the bout and regain possession if you're the guns and Black Machismo. That's their goal. What a brawl this thing is. Look at the hands. Both of them taped up. Uh, uh, Alex Shelley. Chris Saban has both of his hands taped up. Alex Shelley's right hand is taped up. And you can see that Team 3D is using that to their advantage, going for him to inflict more damage. And right now, Brother Ray has just been pulling on Alex Shelley's hand. And Alex Shelley in pain. And Again, we mentioned it, it may be up to Jay Lethal. It may be a factor where Chris Saban and Alex Shelley will not be able to hold on to those ropes. And talking to anybody that's been up there, it is a challenge. Oh, we talked about it, Dom, several times when we previewed this match. The injured hands of the guns give Team 3D and Divine such a huge advantage. And now they're going to put the tables into play. Ray and Devon positioning, setting up one of the tables outside here. I see Saban down. I see Shelly down, while Lethal and Divine battle it out on the far side. Well, right now, a lot is on Jay Lethal because he's the only one of the three 
that's not injured. And it, so much is riding on him. And Saban and, and Alex Shelley are going to have to dig down farther than they've dug down before. But it's obvious what Team 3D is doing. Setting up these tables on the outside. They're going to try to take them out so that they're never even a factor. Oh, no, look, look at this. Out. They're going to try and power bomb them oh. through the tables out of nowhere. Here comes Lethal. A Jay Lethal, just that speed, able to come in here and break it up. And oh, oh, he slams Brother Ray's face right on the announce table. And Saban using the feet. Now it's Shelly going to try, going to try. But look at he hand, the hand is hurting. And he's going to have to fight through that pain. The fire of Lethal enables the guns and Black Machismo to take control. And you can Can't see right it. there, you can see that. The, I don't know if the hands were broken or not, Don, but when they took the hands, extended them across, used the kendo stick across the table, you've got to think that probably, that had to be the result. Uh, they got no feeling in them. Whatever happened, whether the nerves are damaged, they have no feeling, and it was obvious. Alex Shelley went up there, and he couldn't feel the grip on the ropes, and you can see Saban, and he can't, he can't do, do it either. either. He can't do it either. Don, we talked to the guns earlier today, and they didn't really want to talk about this situation. They didn't want to, I think, use it as an excuse, but right before our very eyes, we're seeing that they just don't have the ability to climb their way across the cable and take down that belt, and boy, that's going to limit them. The X Division champion is going to have to step up, and this is not a match that he's as familiar with as, say, Chris Saban is. We have a but look, look at quickly, him. he makes oh, his way across. Story, and he knows. He is so close, but Johnny Devine there. And once that happens, oh, Johnny Devine takes him out. Wow. Just when it looked like Black Machismo was on the verge of taking down his X Division title belt and giving his three-man team the victory, it was Devine to the rescue. And it was Devine also who obviously hooked that belt up on top at those where those cables crisscross. And Look here goes Johnny go. Devine. Oh, Alex Shelley trying to get in the ring and saving both the guns. Oh, he's got it. They got a hold of the legs. And now. Oh! oh man. Wow. Well, they swung it from the top from 15 feet high above. And he just came crashing down on his head. Oh, but they, while they were basking in that, Brother Ray just hit him with a double clothesline and took them both out. Well, you can see Brother Ray gonna jump off. And yeah, right. That, that four-inch vertical leap doesn't quite work, and then the five-inch by Devon, not enough. They've been working on that vertical leap to get it up to four and five, and now he's gonna try and boost him. Well, this is a smart move. Oh, the back. Obviously, Brother Devon uh, had a little, little extra fun during the Christmas holidays, I guess, because Brother Ray couldn't pick him up. Team 3D. Trying to take down that X Division title belt and win Ultimate X, and now Brother Ray going to climb on the back of Brother Devon, and not too successful there either. They're going to take this prize. They're going to take themselves out of this match if they keep this up. You can see Brother Devon and there. They said they were the best physical shape of their lives. And he's like a gazelle. Remember that one? <laughs> oh, oh, nice drop kick by Saban. Saban catches Devon unaware, oh, drop kicks him to the floor, and Brother Ray follows up a headbutt by taking and just flinging Saban outside, and boy, he just crashed right against the guardrail. Look at this, Brother Ray gonna try, and if he gets a hold of this, gets on that rope, I don't even know. Oh, oh look, look at how quickly Machismo cut in front of him. Black Machismo <laughs> waves at him and says, you're not coming this way. Oh, he says, come and get it. He says, come on, I just dare you to come across. Oh, he's just teasing. Uh-oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh oh that's what can happen. Exactly. Sweat on the hands. And, and look at Lethal, he's holding that head. Can Brother Ray do it? No. Uh -oh. The showboating of Lethal backfires. I'm surprised and the ropes didn't snap. I was wondering the same thing. Brother Ray just crashed down as well. He's going to try it again. I think at the first you don't succeed. Oh, nice drop kick by Lethal right there. Brother Ray sits down on that top turnbuckle after the drop kick, and well, I don't know, Black Machismo gonna try and suplex the 300 plus pounds? Well, he figures he's got him stunned after he fell, but look at this. Brother Ray just using that weight and just pushes Black Machismo off, and look at this. He's gonna try it, no! Oh, he goes for the leg drop, but he Lethal gets out of the way. I think it was a leg drop, or do you think it was trying to go to the Machismo playbook and, well, hit, the the top, and hit the top rope elbow drop? Now, Black Machismo. All I know is it would have hurt. Back up again. Look how easily he's cutting across that steel cable. Johnny Devine there to try and stop him. 
and Devine does and takes him right back down to the mat. Johnny Devine now takes lethal off. Oh, and then the knees, breaks the knees up. And man, a lot like Batista caught him right in the chest. That was a hell, hell of a move, win, wasn't it? Yeah, yes, it was. Oh, it sure was. Devine turns the tables instantly and then sees that Lethal's in trouble. The wind's been taken right out of his chest, and then he just stomped right down, right on the chest of Black Machismo. Now Devine making his way up, and Alex Shelley's getting back in the game. Alex Shelley lets him get up there because he knows he can do damage if he can stop it, but you run the risk of him getting across in time. But now, not gonna happen. Wow, Alex Shelley just jumps right into him, pulls him down. That brings Devine down and saves him back it? in. Springs oh, off. Oh, what a DDT! Spiked it. Dropped him right on his head in the middle of the ring in the Motor City Machine Guns now. Boy, they just take down that title belt and they get the win. Black Machismo gets the gold back. Slingshot out. Brother Ray moves out of the way. Well, he can go quick when he has to, and he was able to get out of the way in time as Alex Shelley committed himself. And Brother Ray's got that kendo stick in his hands. And we've already seen... Oh, oh God! Again, the damage with the kendo stick on the hand. Just what we saw on impact. The kendo stick crashing oh. across the hands on the table. And now Saban feels it as he was climbing up the steel structure. Just in case you weren't reminded on how bad they damaged him, they sent a message loud and clear. And now Brother Diva going to try to get up there with the help of Brother Ray and see if he can't scurry across there. Might be their best bet at this point. Gonna go up on the shoulders of Brother Ray with Divine laid out. Here goes Brother Devon, and they're walking oh, him across. Smart move! Oh, nice kick! And Super now kick! Devon Hagee. Dear life! Oh man! Black Machismo cuts him out from underneath him, and man, what a fall! You know, I, got, I got to admit that was pretty good strategy. That smart move! It really was by Team 3D. Oh, they don't, they don't, they're not decorated for nothing. These guys are smart, wild. Oh. You got to admit, that was thinking on their feet, or at least on Brother Ray's feet, and yeah. he no, was on the shoulders. No one has ever questioned their intelligence, not the intelligence of these two bullies. Team 3D, good game plan, didn't pay off at that point. X Division Championship belt and the match hanging the balance, and here goes Machismo. Black Machismo knows it's going to be up to him. Oh, did you see that? Black Machismo falls down, but he gets the Hurricane Rana on the mind, and then just gets hit by one of the most vicious clotheslines I think I've ever seen if he got turned inside, outside, and upside down. So Cal Val looks on in horror after that decapitation style clothesline. Oh, my brother Ray, and he moves out of the way and the referee is down. Shelly caught him with the clothesline. Oh, and then you see how he just puts him flat on his back as Alex Shelly out. Johnny Devine though out, and now what is brother Ray doing? He's reaching underneath there with the more referee. Tables, more tables, on. Oh, he's got a ladder. He's got a ladder. Now, come on. Now, think of the Ultimate X matches. I can tell you that among X Division wrestlers, ladies and gentlemen, there's, a, there's an unwritten rule that you don't use the ladder in an Ultimate X match. But to think that 3D would have any respect for anybody no. in the X Division is ridiculous. No. So, obviously, they're going to take this shortcut. It's about pride in the X Division. It's always been about pride. It's about the competition. It's about going up there and proving you're the best, not taking a shortcut, but while they're doing it, here come the guns! Oh, perfect harmony as they kick them at the same time. Double ends Zagiri by Saban and Shelly, but Devine's got the kendo stick and he just throws it right in oh. Saban's gut, and then he just hits Shelly right over the head and shoulders. Oh man, what a wicked shot to Alex Shelly, and now Johnny Devine has a chance, and is he gonna take the shortcut himself? I don't think that even he would have some kind of Pride inside oh, that. How do you, what, what are you talking about? Yeah, you're he's right. the X he's Division a traitor. traitor. You're right. He's got no pride at all. He's associated with, with Ray and Devon, and now he's. Oh, oh, uh, oh, uh, 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 uh. oh, oh my God! As they send him off the ladder onto the tables, and I'll tell you what, the ladder's sitting far enough. Oh, what a 3D! 3D on Chris Saban. Divine laid out. Saban obviously laid out, bodies all over. Here comes Machismo just out of camera range, gonna go springboard. Oh my God, what a wicked shot as they sent the ladder right into him. 
right into him. Oh my gosh, they're all done. Who's gonna stop him from climbing up there? Yeah, at this point, it's just Brother Ray and Brother Devon. Other four competitors and the referee laid out, and Devon unstraps oh, the belt and they, they win Ultimate X. By taking a shortcut, and look at him hanging up there. Oh, look at this, the referee's still sure. knocked out. And now Rudy Charles getting to his feet, he looks up, and he doesn't realize this what just took place. You know, you know what? When you, and Rudy Charles now calls for the bell. You know what? All right, announce it, Penzer. This is crap. Ladies and gentlemen, your winners, Team 3D and Johnny Devine. You know, we've been announcing X Division matches for like, what, five and a half years at this point? Think of all the this, this is This is a low point for the X Division, seeing this, seeing a match with the innovation, with the tradition of Ultimate X treated like this by 3D. It was. It's a mockery made out of one of the most innovative matches in wrestling history. Up next in final resolution, TNA tag titles are on the line. That makes me ill. In TNA, we have two types of wrestlers. We have TNA diehard who come here and entertain and bust fans every night of the week. And we got superstars who think they can come and do whatever they want, however they feel like. You know, Joe, I sat in this ring at Turning Point. Superstars who come out here and not only screw us, the hardworking wrestlers. I heard you run Scott Hall down. Scott Hall, Chico. You don't know Scott Hall. Scott Hall, kiss my You punked out and you're a punk. I heard you run me down. TNA is the men who come in here, risk their lives on scaffoldings, on wires, while others show up and pad their pensions. How is it, Cornette, that I have destroyed everybody you put in front of me, yet somehow I still don't get my title shot? Maybe you can explain to me why you've given Kevin Nash and the Phantom of the Impact Zone, Scott Hall, a tag team title match, yet I managed to not be able to get on. You can't explain any of it to me. You remind me a lot of Hall and Nash when we were younger. There's a place that the outsiders have in this business. You have got to recognize you're not there yet. The only thing I recognize, even the most historically dominant pack leaders have to move aside or be put aside. Well, I promise you this, Joe. I sure as hell ain't gonna walk aside. Gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. I've heard what you both have to say, and I'm gonna give you both what you want. Sort of. I agreed to give you and Scott Hall a tag team championship match at final resolution, but apparently Mr. Hall has other plans. That means you don't have a partner, Kevin Nash. Samoa Joe, you want all these main events, all these title shots, all these big matches, but you're not on final resolution either. So it seems to me the only fair thing to do, if you want these big matches and title shots, if you want to be on final resolution, then you can be Kevin Nash's partner for the tag titles at Final Resolution! The Samoan Submission Machine, Samoa Joe and Kevin Nash join forces to take on the phenomenal AJ Styles and Tom Cole for the TNA World Tag Team Championship. Next. Joe, earlier this evening I talked with your partner, Kevin Nash. Now, although you guys didn't start off on the right foot, it seems as though you guys are on solid ground going into this tag team title match with AJ and Tomko. You know, you're right, Crystal. Me and Kev, we didn't start off on the right foot. In fact, we probably started off on the worst foot you possibly could. But maybe, Crystal, maybe, just maybe, I was wrong. Maybe I was wrong about Nash. Maybe I was even wrong about Scott Hall. But you see, over the past few weeks, me and Kevin, we've been training together, we've been preparing, getting ready for tonight, and I've learned a few things. Maybe a few things that I never knew before. As a matter of fact, I learned an awful lot about mind games, Kevin. I appreciate that. So tonight, AJ and Tomko, I pray that your personal drama doesn't get in the way because me and Big Kev, we're coming there with one mission, to win those titles and destroy you in the process. And Crystal, maybe, just maybe, the old guard and the new guard make history.
And it is time for the second of three title bouts tonight at Final Resolution as the tag teams take the spotlight in the fight for the gold. And I think this one's going to be very interesting. Let's preview the title match with the taglines. And it was recently on Impact when Jim Cornette from TNA Management laid down the law to Nash and Joe. He said either team together or miss Final Resolution. Think of Samoa Joe's verbal barrel of Scott Hall. It drew up a wedge between him and Nash, but this week on Impact, Nash and Joe are back on the same page. No question, AJ Styles' indecision has impacted his team with Tomko. Will it have a negative effect on the champs earlier? Tomko told Styles, don't screw up. If you do, you'll have a problem. You'll have a big problem with me. Ladies and gentlemen, the next contest of final resolution is for the TNA World Tag Team Championship. Scheduled for one fall, introducing team number one. They are the TNA World Tag Team Champions, Tonko and the Phenomenal A, G Styles. Well, the first question that comes to your mind is how focused is the Phenomenal AJ Styles? You can see Tomko pointing to the head, telling him he's got to stay that way. AJ still hasn't made a decision. Who's he gonna be with? Christian Cage, Kurt Angle. All I know is one thing, he better be 100% with Tomko in this match. And their opponents, the challengers first, from American Samoa, the Samoan submission machine, Samoa Joe! Well, this is a situation, Don, where we just talked about the, the focus possibly being a problem between AJ Styles and Tomko. You look across the other side of the ring at the challenging team, and Samoa Joe first out here. You know, maybe a similar situation here until we saw Thursday night on Impact that they were definitely on the same page because of Kevin Nash. And his tag team partner from Detroit, Michigan, Kevin Nash! Actions speak louder than words. And Thursday night on Impact, Kevin Nash showed me that he has respect for Samoa Joe, the way that he eliminated himself from the heavyweight gauntlet. In essence, in the mind of Kevin Nash, he wanted to hand that gauntlet to Samoa Joe. It didn't quite work out that way because of Christian Cage, but Nash's mind was in the right place, and his heart as well. Well, I think he sees a lot of himself in Samoa Joe. I really do. Samoa Joe, rebellious, wants the goal. He feels he's earned it, and I think that Kevin Nash feels that he was that way when he was Samoa Joe's age and when he was young and, and coming through in this business. And then another part of me thinks that Kevin Nash realizes that in his career, he's gonna have fewer and fewer and fewer chances of ever having championship gold. And when he realized that the gold was gonna be on the line, well, you know what? All of a sudden, enemies can become friends if that's what it takes to get it. Before this tag title match gets underway, I want to just give you one quick brief update and also, again, apologize for the actions of Robert Roode. Yes, TNA nor any of its partners condone what we saw earlier. Disgusting. Just got another quick update. Charmel has been taken to the hospital, and we have received word that TNA trainers fear that she has suffered a broken jaw. We will update you this Thursday night on Impact on Spike TV as for her condition. Dark, dark night. You can see AJ Styles, Samoa Joe starting it off, and you think about, anytime I see these two in the ring, it just it invokes so many memories of so many different matches. It's, 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 it's a human highlight film when you see these two. And, and this has got to bode well for Big Kevin Nash. He knows that Samoa Joe knows AJ Styles like the back of his hand. And he realized that Tomko is the guy, he's the power man. And Kevin Nash, if he can help out in that respect, that's what he'll do. Styles unleashes rights and lefts. Look at the gut of Samoa Joe, but look at how quickly Joe first goes with a body scissors move and then directly into working on the leg, knee, and ankle of AJ Styles trying to get a submission and a tap out of him here in the early going and then tag is into big Kevin Nash. Well, I like how he's done this. He's brought Kevin Nash in quickly and this is, I think, to establish the bond, to establish a little, continu a little continuity between these two and, and also to get Kevin Nash involved early and get, get everybody's mindset right. 
Oh, look at the power of Nash. Wow, is he in shape. I'm telling you, he has taken this serious. Look at him. He just picked up AJ Styles and flung him like it was nothing. Boy, tossed him across the ring. Styles crashes down to the mat. Nash quickly follows up by shooting him off into the ropes. The clothesline missed the back elbow shot. Not even close, but AJ able to float over Nash and going to oh. try and take out the leg. And I mean, it's one of those things, if you've been following wrestling, you know the numerous knee surgeries that Kevin Nash has had through the years. Something like 13, isn't it? 13 to 16 or something. It's, it's just, I was watching him earlier today and get ready for this matchup, and you could not believe all the things that he's got to put on the knees and the legs to get himself ready to go out there. That just shows you how hungry he is to put his body through that. That's what it means to have gold. But look at Tonko. He's somebody that has tag team gold all over the world. And buddy, you're right. Whether it's here in TNA or over in the Orient with the New Japan Pro Wrestling Organization, Tomko holds the tag team gold, and Tomko has really proven in the past couple of weeks, Don, that he's not only a force to be reckoned with here in TNA, but also he's a guy who knows what he wants, and he knows that Tomko is for Tomko and Tomko alone. But look at Kevin Nash go on the offensive. Perfectly placed knee right into the gut, measures him again, and boy, Tom Coach just slumped over in the corner after that blow. Well, Kevin Nash using that weight, that big body of his, and just giving it everything. He's got a little extra oomph, and he knows he has to do that with Tom Coach. He's got to inflict damage early. I mean, I'll tell you something about Tom Coach that I respect. The fact that we've watched him grow so much here in TNA, and the fact that he decided it's time that Tom Coach was for Tom Coach, that nobody else can do anything for him anymore. If he's going to go farther, it's got to be on him, and here he goes. Nash gets the shoulder up in time. Right, quick pin attempt here by Tom Coach to try and Allow the champs to retain the gold in the early going, but Nash able to power out before three. Tomko then drops down with all of his weight across the knee of Nash. And look at the way that he's got that, that leg bit where he puts his pressure directly on the, the knees of him. Had so many surgeries through the years and then just cranks back on that leg and foot. I mean, it's, it's just eerie hearing Nash scream like that. You can hear him scream. At a high pitch screen, he's got to get Joe back in this match. Oh! Wow! AJ hit it perfectly off the ropes. Hey, Kevin Nash is hurt. He's hurt bad. Oh, imperative that Kevin Nash get to the corner and get the fresh man, his tag team partner Samoa Joe, into this battle because you, know, you can see Tom Coach just—he's got him in his sights. Wow, Nash though, just that experience. He let Tom go feel confident. He came steamrolling in. Picked him up and side slammed him down on his back. And now, Kevin Nash, though, it doesn't matter. If he doesn't get Joe in here, there's not much more he's going to be able to do until he can get himself some composure. He's in massive pain. Samoan submission machine. Samoa Joe extends the hand into the ring, and Nash makes contact. Tag in both Joe and Styles are new, fresh, and legal. Mid-ring inverted atomic drop stop Styles. Joe wow. off the ropes. Great kick to the side of the head, drops him. There's the senton, 280 pounds behind that backsplash. Here he goes, attention turned to Tomko for that fall away Samoan drop slam. Man, when he gets focused, when he gets it right, he just goes one after another. Now he's trying to get Kevin Nash back into this matchup. Trying to let him know not to worry about the pain. And he lets Nash use him and throws him right into Tomko and then sends him into the big boot. What teamwork these guys are doing for never working together. They are on the same page with mutual respect. Nash and Samoa Joe, what a unit this is. Is Wow, Tomko just gets suplexed overhead. Team owned by Joe for two. You know, if you'd have told me that this is how this match would go, I'd watch say- AJ, Watch AJ, watch AJ. AJ wasn't focused, but that's not the case. Is AJ springboards off the ropes and nails that drop kick into the back. They've been focused, it's just Nash and Joe have been on, on fire. Big shots from Tomko on Samoa Joe. And now he's he's throttling him, he's, he's blatantly choking him right in front of the referee. You can see it's just the emotion sometimes that these guys get caught up in. And they're not trying to blatantly break the rules a lot of the times, they just get caught up in it. And you, with, with somebody like Joe, you know you've got to hurt him, you've got to take that air out of him. And look at this, Tomko, AJ showing why they're champs. Getting him in the corner, working together, keeping Joe away from Nash. Combination of things that drives you to do that. Obviously, the adrenaline situation. Try and prove to your partner that you're going to do anything and everything within your power to either keep or win those TNA World Tag Team titles. Here comes Joe off the ropes, and AJ just drill 
killed him with a drop kick. When AJ gets that in line and he gets it coming off the ropes right here it is you can see joe gets his shoulder up in time but he can hit that drop kick like nobody else and he's always connect and he always knows where he is in the ring uh, the leg extension is incredible the snap the contact the power of the move behind it and now joe's in trouble in the corner and tomko comes in to try and take advantage of a situation and a short arm clothesline is money pin two nope I mean, think of that move. He takes it and pulls him into the close line. Holds on to it while he's sitting in the body a different direction. And when you're big and tall and strong like Tomko, the damage it can do is just immeasurable. Tomko working on the, the head of Samoa Joe. Working on the side of his head and his neck as well while Joe tries to use elbow shots to the stomach and chest to break it. Finally does, but boy, Tomko just uncoiled that time with the One, elbow. Two. No. You talked about the power of the short arm clothesline. Well, how about that shot? He just nailed Joe as he came off. Man, Tomko is somebody that is just, just every single day he gets better and better with more and more experience. I mean, he's, the, the sky's the limit. And there he holds Joe so that AJ Styles can get a shot, and then he gets another shot on the way out. And now he sends him to AJ just like he wants him. AJ drops Joe down. Gonna apply a variation here of the Indian oh. Deathlock and then reach back and, and grab on as well. Cranking on the head with the chin lock. Beautiful move here with, with AJ Styles bridging his body. Boy, Joe in trouble here. Submission at the same time, but you see that Joe used his elbow right across the bridge of the nose of AJ Styles. Earlier it was Kevin Nash that was getting this beating in the ring and he had to get Joe tagged in or it was gonna be over. Now Joe's fighting himself in that situation, but Joe gets to his feet, just goes on pure emotion, but oh, Tomko, what a chop! Oh, another one! This shot by oh. Tomko, punctuated by a DDT and a follow pin, and Samoa Joe barely gets the shoulder roll. I'll tell you what, Samoa Joe just, like you said, if he hesitated a split second longer, he'd have been counted out. Look at Joe, he's dazed. You can see he's wobbly. And the teamwork, the quick tag, the perfection by the tag team champions. I mean, we questioned the, the direction of AJ Styles. The focus here with that TNA World's Heavyweight title matchup still to come. And AJ not making a decision whether he'll align himself with the champion Kurt Angle or the challenger Christian Cage. And, and I sense that in the early going of this match that AJ and Tomko work together, but boy, they have really fought back for the past several minutes. And what an exchange this is. Can you top this? And Joe momentarily gets the better of it until AJ oh, breaks the eyes. And what oh, a shot. what a shot from Joe is right. He is so incredible. Samoa Joe, you can't count him out until the pin happens. But look at Tomko, caught him in the back. That allows AJ to come off the ropes. Oh, Joe just caught him in the air when AJ went for that hurricane run and he just used it and power bombed into the mat. Slam like power bomb. Samoa Joe taking AJ on the back of the head of AJ Styles. Concussed as he crashed down to the mat. Tomko cuts across. Just took Kevin Nash down and here comes Tomko again. Wow. Snap slam. And the snap slams somebody the size of Tomko. Boy, is that it's impressive. an incredible feat. But that's Samoa Joe and to do it. As tired as he's gotta be, as hurt as he's gonna be, and now that may have been a bad move on top, though. Nash is mad and he wants to be tagged in. Oh, look, look at, at Nash. It. You can see the fire in the eyes of Kevin Nash extending that hand in and says, you can read his lips, you can hear him. He says, come on. What in the world? He just, oh my God. Did you just see this? He, he just walked, jumped down off the ring and he's walking up the ramp. He's leaving Joe out He was there. just screaming, come on, Joe. He drops down off the apron, and you're right. Kevin Nash heads to the back. What? Oh, look at this. Oh, man. What a counter by Samoa Joe, and it looks like it was over. And he's able to counter it. Now Joe's feeding off the fury he's got to be feeling of Nash leaving him to dry. Hung out to dry. And look at Joe. He knows it's two on one, but he's not backing down for a minute. Is he going to go for the muscle buster yeah, on top he, of all people? Well, you can't forget about AJ Styles, and that's what happens. He just couldn't hit it quick enough. Boy, Samoa Joe on the verge on a... Wow! Oh, look at this! Single-handedly winning the tag titles. Down goes Styles. Great kick for Tomko. Boy, what a feat this would be if Joe, after his partner Kevin Nash, bails on him and walks out. Muscle buster! He's got it! Get up. 
and I still cannot. I can't fathom what we just seen. Did this? He had a chance to win gold here, Mike. He just left Samoa Joe out there. He was waiting for the right moment to teach him his personal lesson. And Joe's got that applied. He's got the choke applied, and Tomko drops down, and oh, Joe gonna go out onto the apron. No, Joe able to stop himself before he hit, and I don't think Tomko realizes that Joe's there now. He does. Oh, the Pele again, out of nowhere. Now the boot, the teamwork, and here they go. Oh, come on, double team powered down on Samoa Joe and referee Andrew two. Thomas counts two and three, and they keep the belt. Ladies and gentlemen, your winners and still TNA World Tag Team Champions, Tomko and the Phenomenal A, Jay Styles. I mean, think if Kevin Nash would not have walked out on Samoa Joe. I think the results would have been different. I think we would have had new tag team champions. I'll tell you what, once Samoa Joe realized he was on an island, we saw a fire out of him. He knew he had to do it. He had to take a one on two, but the numbers game, and when you got two greats like those two, the champs, it was too much for him, Joe. It was too much for him. Yes, they remain tag team title holders. It's time to decide the drinking championship series. Eric Young, James Storm, part three. All right, Storm, listen, listen to me, listen. It's been a long road. This is the rubber match, you guys. <laughs> he said rubber. <laughs> Remember when we bought those? That was awesome. first. Hey, listen, rubber match. Presidential heat walk. Presidential heat walk, okay? It's high-low cards. Loser has to do a shot. First person to pass out, loses. Presidential heat walk, you can deal. Right. You can deal, I'm ready. High-low. Cheaters! Come on, Storm! All right, high-low. Oh, Here we go. What am I doing? You're dealing, you're dealing. Okay, right. okay. Ready? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's low. That's a trace in Mexican. <laughs> no, look good, buddy. Uh, oh! Oh! Are you kidding me? You're out. That's You're out. Oh. Now match. Oh! 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 oh. 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 Storm. Oh. Suck it up. Oh. Suck it up, Storm. Oh! oh. All right. He's right. got to get oh. 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 Unbelievable. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. That's a good card. No, Storm. Come on. That's a good card. Sorry about your damn luck, man. <laughs> hey, that's my say. Shut up. It's on the back of my T-shirt that you can get on TNAShop.com. Congratulations. Hey, Congratulations. All right, deal it out. Here, uh, here we go. Last one. Hey, let's forget this. Last person, the, whoever wins this, has to do the phone. Okay. Oh, great idea. Up the ante. Yeah. Great idea. Yeah, that is a good idea. Come on, Storm. Here you can go. do it. You can Woo. do it, Storm. Doesn't get any better. Yep. As a king, it's gonna be tough to beat. I'm tough to beat. I'm tough to beat. I'm the manager. I'm tough to beat. Help like Daryl Sittler. Remember him? Yep. Yep. Please, Jack. Come on. Against all odds, our debut show in Greenville, South Carolina. We now know James Storm, Eric Young, falls in the court of James Storm. Well, absolutely, James Storm now, because he won the two out of three, no matter how he did it, he gets to name the kind of a match that he wants at Against All Odds against Eric Young. We are at the 11th hour. We still don't have a decision from AJ Styles. Earlier tonight, we heard from a very confident challenger, Christian Cage. Now, let's get pre-match comments from the TNA World Heavyweight Champion, Kurt Angle. Well, here we are, Kurt, just moments away, and still no decision from AJ Styles, despite Karen's best efforts. What are you talking about? What efforts? Do you know something I don't? Well, yeah, she tried to persuade AJ to join our team. She didn't 
tell you about this earlier? Uh, tell me what? Well, she tried to seduce him, you know? She got up in his area, kissed his neck, got her little freak on, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of cool, but she didn't, <laughs> didn't quite. You tell me my wife seduced AJ Styles, like Mrs. Robinson? Well, I don't know who she is, but yes. Did he bite? Didn't seem to commit either way. <laughs> but he will. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you see, nobody can resist Karen Angle. Nobody. Nobody can resist my wife. I see the way you look at her. You look at her like a dog in heat. But that's the way this whole thing works. I mean, I'm the brawn, and she's the beauty in the brains. And Christian Cage, tonight's going to be a very long night for you. Because Tomko wants nothing to do with you. And it appears that AJ Styles is on my team. And don't forget about my Olympic gold medal. And even a great, a great wrestler like you, Christian Cage, cannot overcome those odds. So tonight, your dreams of being the TNA World Heavyweight Champion are going to be shattered. Oh, it's real. It's damn real. It's shake and break time, baby. Solitude. They have all turned their backs on you. I just want to say to AJ and Tomko, you made the right choice by joining the Angle Alliance. Not only do I consider you two my friends, but now you're my family. What do you do when what you once thought would last forever ends in an instant? Kurt Angle just couldn't take it anymore. Now look at this. AJ Styles trying to break it up. He doesn't want this to happen. Tomko's walking away from the situation. I am not with the Angle Alliance, nor am I with the Christian Coalition. Do you give up? I heard all the whispers behind my back that I deserved to get sucker punched by Kurt Angle. Accept defeat. Now you know what I say to those people? No. You fight back. I agree. I guess you get what you deserve when you're the champ and you're looking down on everybody else. Use their betrayal to fuel your rage. For every time that I get beat down, I will always get up and continue to be a brick. And that's what makes me, me, and all of you just you. You are an instant classic. Nobody at TNA likes you. They can't stand you. You don't need them. AJ, the time has come where you have to make a decision. Don't go! You don't need anybody. He can keep them. You are the champ, not Kurt Angle. The instant classic is the real world heavyweight champion. There's only one thing you need. One is the loneliest number, but there is only room for one at the top. The Instant Classic Christian Cage challenges the Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship next. Well, this is the one that we've been waiting for. It's main event time at final resolution, and our focus shifts to the heavyweights and the TNA World Championship. Let's look at the tail of the tape. And when we do, you'll see that those numbers illustrate just how even these two competitors are. Experience edge for Christian, seemingly negated by the vast amateur background of Angle. Bullet points here, AJ made the deal with Karen Angle to form the Alliance and now trying to use her female charms. You couldn't have two bigger egos than Christian and Kurt Angle. Will that aspect play a role in tonight's title match? And it's two of the biggest egos and Two of the biggest names in our profession set to square off. Cage and Angle, TNA World Title, it's up next. behind the egos that they have, and you can refer to them as egomaniacs, but at the same time, damn, they bring it, don't they? Christian Cage, Kurt Angle, two of the best 
that our sport and that this organization, TNA, has to offer, and they're gonna fight for the goal right now. The official introductions for the TNA World Heavyweight title matchup are next. Let's go to the middle of the ring and Jeremy Borash. Take it, JB. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall and is your final resolution main event of the evening. When the bell rings, the man in charge, Mr. Earl Hebner. And now, ladies and gentlemen, live from Universal Studios Orlando, it's time for your heavyweight championship bout of the evening. Introducing, first of all, the challenger. He stands in the corner to my left and weighed in this morning at 224 pounds from Tampa, Florida, by way of Toronto, Ontario, Canada, he is the challenger, the instant classic, Christian Cage. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing, standing in the corner to my right, he weighed in this morning at 231 pounds and comes to us from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He is professional wrestling's only Olympic gold medalist and the current reigning and defending TNA heavyweight champion of the world. This is Kurt Angle. Sure, feel the tension, can't you? Here in Orlando, Florida, at Universal Studios, as JB told you, referee Earl Hebner holds the gold high ahead. This TNA World Heavyweight Championship belt to go to the winner of Kurt Angle and Christian Cage. And here we go, that's the opening bell. Mike, I was very curious to see how the crowd would respond to both of these great champions. And you think about how they've treated these people in the impact zone and, and all across the world. And it was a resounding, Definitely not for Kurt. I don't know that I felt that the whole place was ready to come back Christian Cage, but I tell you one thing, you can tell Kurt Angle is not who they're behind. And at the same time, the mystery, the indecision of one phenomenal AJ Styles continues, Don. We still don't know exactly who AJ is going to be aligned with here, either champion or challenger. And the opening bell already underway, and here we go. Angle and Christian, the Olympic gold medalist and the instant classic for the big gold TNA World Championship belt where they lock it up. Momentary advantage here for Angle, but it's quickly reversed by Christian who overpowered him right into the corner. You see there the great go behind ability of the Olympic gold medalist and the standing switch for Christian Cage, the challenger. Mike, I know you've done this for so many years, and oh, as you see, Corango using that, that collegiate wrestling move right there as he brings him up and you see Christian Grimmelos, but when you get a match of this magnitude and stars of this magnitude, and it's for everything. It's for the TNA World Championship, and you've done so many World Championship matches throughout your career. It, you never get tired of never. this feeling, do you? It's, 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 a, it's a fun anxiety, but it really is to you. Anticipate it, you anticipate it, and all of a sudden, 
bam, there it is. Oh, level of anticipation so high here. You can feel that electricity in the crowd as the Instant Classic grabs the side headlock. Angle gonna try and maneuver him across and shoots him into the ropes. Here comes Christian springing, bouncing off the ropes. High leapfrog by Angle, missed with the clothesline. Meets him in mid-ring, gonna try and suplex him overhead, but Christian stops, blocks him. Series of elbow shots, went for the boot. Angle neutralizes, Christian goes for the kick and misses. Boy, just great wrestling action. Champion and challenge, almost like both of them are one step ahead of the other. Oh, the cat and mouse games are, are, are going on in full force, as like you said. They know that if they miss what they try, they better get out of the way because the other one's got a counter. And they do. It's, they, they, they watched each other's careers for so long. They've been a part of history together. And you're right. But think about this. This is Christian Cage's chance to get this belt back. And in his mind, he never lost it any of the times he ever held it. It was always in situations where, you know, whether it was a King of the Mountain match, whether it was something else, where the title left him and went to somebody else. He feels like it's rightfully his. That's why he always calls himself the champ. And this is his chance to be able to cement it again with that belt. And when you take into account the overall experience level of both of these competitors, the fact that they've been in so many high profile, high pressure matches, title bouts through the years, They've got to realize, Don, that they can't make that one big fatal mistake that's going to turn the match in the tide of their competitor or possibly, just like that, lead to a victory for their opponent. Christian shoots Angle off into the ropes once again. Here comes Angle towards him. This time it's Christian with the leapfrog. That time the clothesline missed by the Instant Classic, but he plants Angle face first by taking him high overhead. Bad landing for the champ and trying to get under the skin of Mr. Angle is Christian Cage. A little paintbrush shot to the head. These guys are so See good. There? Look at that. Christian Cage baited him, and he was able to get in there and Kurt Angle bit. He moved out of the way, and he caught that steel repo. Uh -oh, trying Trinidad. to end it. But he, Kurt Angle was waiting for it. He knew he was trying to go to it early and look at him get them arms around the neck. I am kind of surprised that he went for the unprettier that early in the match, but again, it's what we talked about. Waiting for that first mistake. Could it be fatal? Almost was right there, but Angle able to get the power, twist and turn that move around and go right back to grabbing the side headlock on the challenger. Oh, they want to make a statement too, Mike. They want to be able to go in there and Whoa. take somebody of, a, of the pedigree that Kurt Angle has and beat him in, a, in the first couple minutes of a match. And boy, you got bragging rights at that point. And look at Christian Cage right now. He's got things going his way. Mentally, he is so focused. I think that was a statement move, and I think it's evident by the frustration of the champ, Kurt Angle. You heard that resounding noise throughout the building here as he kicked the steel steps, sort of frustrated, and gets right back into the ring and gets face to face and nose to nose with Christian. One thing about Kurt Angle, he, he just can reach back to that, the competitiveness of the Olympics and all those things that he's been brought up with. And, and, and in the heat of the battle, you just have to, to for, have your own game uh -oh. plan. I think and he spit on him, I think he spit right in Angle's face. Now, I don't know if that was a move to make or not. And, and you can see right now, Kurt Angle, Christian Cage just trading blows. Look, look at exchange this at Christian is. Cage. He's not backing down from there. Look at Bill Mellis for a second, Mike. I look at it as a, as a calculating move by Christian. He saw how effective he was when he tossed Angle out to the floor, got underneath his skin, figured he could do the same by spitting in his face. Exchange out on the apron, elbow shot. Oh, look at Christian. Angle never saw the boots coming, and he rocked him. He knows that Kurt Angle can get so emotional. And Christian Cage, you gotta admit, is more centered. He's more able to, to keep himself more composed. But a lot of times, Kurt Angle used that emotion to his advantage. Oh, wow! Christian Cage climbs the rope, waits until Kurt Angle was just getting to his feet so he can hit him and knock him right back down. Wow, diagonal spring across, crashing down with the cross body block. And both men are down on the floor. We gotta take another look at this. Look at the contact here. Look at that. He just he took the angle that was the quickest for him and the angle that he was able to get more spring off of the ropes. And it was perfectly placed. And you could see Karen Angle frustrated knowing that right now Christian Cage in total control. Yeah, we talked about the frustration earlier of the champion Kurt Angle and wife Karen equally frustrated as well. The fact that her husband not doing so well here. Christian perched up on top when Angle turns around. Here he comes off the top and boy, Kurt was ready for it. Oh, Suplexed him right man. over the top and down to the concrete. Did you see how quickly Kurt Angle applied that? He knew he had to do it fast and it was just like a, a last ditch effort. You can see the, the pain in his face, but man alive did Christian Cage take a fall. He went flying over the ropes and he landed hard.
Boy, big move in the matchup here as the challenger is down, laid out on his back. Angle just unleashed the power behind that suplex and tossed it directly overhead. Back down out of the floor, no place for Christian to land besides the concrete. Kurt Angle can feel it right there. He wanted to get Christian right back in that ring quickly. And well, I he, sense the same thing. He's going right back at him. Look at those kicks. Uh, Vicious kicks to the chest, the chin, the neck, anywhere he can place it. That last one, I think, really rocked Christian. That shot to the, to the chest, and then he follows it up by just slamming him down, powering him down, and immediately goes for the cover, but Christian is able to power out. Front face lock now applied by Angle. Watch him prank the neck. That's what I was talking about, about Kurt Angle using that emotion to his advantage, and when he gets it, he gets it cinched in, and he, he, he feels it, man. He can smell it. He just goes right after it. But Christian Cage just delivered. Oh, oh look at the knee placed by Angle. And then right back on him after that knee for a pin attempt and a near fall for the champ. Boy, Christian got it under way. Couple of shots and chop off the ropes and then Angle cut him off and Angle goes right back in control and boy it's a tough position to put yourself in to try and out Matt wrestle the Olympic gold medalist in a world title match where, where his championship belt's on the line but that's the position that Christian Cage the challenger finds himself in tonight at final resolution. What amazes me and both these guys have done it is how they'll take something to get something. They'll, they'll actually take uh, uh, blows from the other opponent to make them get confident so that they'll expose themselves in a certain way and as soon as they do they've got them where they want them now you see christian cage fighting back with elbows oh kurt angle missed and missed again uh -oh, but now here we not go. this time there it is again with that suplex released high overhead this time he landed oh back first on the canvas instead of going out to the concrete floor but he then rolls out and i think it's a move here where christian's going to try and regroup out there and Try and get this game back together again and get it rolling. You know, we talk about so many guys in TNA and, and how strong they are and what they can do, but when you watch Kurt Angle day in, day out, you forget the little things like that. This guy is oh. a machine, and there you see Karen Angle paint brushing. We, we Christian she, Cage trying to get inside his head. Yeah, we knew she had to play a role tonight, whether it's trying to influence the loyalty of, a, of an AJ Styles or just getting involved in a match out here with a cheap shot like that, the slap to the face of Christian Cage. Karen Angle can't help herself. No, she can't. She puts herself right in the middle of it. But, man, what an uppercut. What a vicious uppercut by Kurt Angle. And you, you can see Christian Cage is reeling. Now, he's got to find a way to somehow get himself back in this, but look at Kurt Angle's relentless. He's not gonna let him have a chance. He's not gonna let him catch his breath. Duly effective move here. Not only cranking on the neck of Christian Cage, but at the same time, look at the body scissors that he has applied. He keeps Christian Cage down, and at the same time, that body scissors will just take the life and breath right out of you. You can see Christian Cage reaching in and trying to pump himself up. He's got that 50. He's, he's trying to get to his feet. He gets to a knee, bracing himself. That's determination. That's what you do when the title's on the line. Fighting back. Shot after shot to the gun. Is it enough? Oh, man. Boy, turn angle again, I think. Oh, but nice kick by Christian Cage. Angle with the double leg, but then you're right. Kicked him off, and then as angle charges, Christian applies the sleeper hold. Not sure that he has it set exactly the way he wants. Good and point. there you see as Angle's able to drop down and then arm toss him. Here we go. Pin. Oh, man, off that arm drag. He quickly came back, got right on him, but got a near fall. Man, I'm telling you, he speared right into him right there. Mm. It was so close. He caught Kurt Angle off guard. And I think Kurt Angle realized all of a sudden that, man, that Earl Hebner had already hit the mat twice and he just out of a gut reaction got the shoulder up. Angle down on the mat while Christian makes his way slowly to the top. Angle charges across, and look at those right hands to the side of the head. Angle follows up. You know he's going to try and bring him in in some maneuver. Wow, the back body drop. I didn't expect that. I thought he'd try a suplex. Instead, the back body drop, and for a bad landing there for Christian. Here comes Angle. Now he's oh, on the top row. Could be Moose all time. Oh, did you see that elevation? We, it got it. Is there any way we can see it? And look at the landing. Look at that extension. Oh, man. One, two, and it was so close. Wow. Came down with all of his body weight. And did you see how high he got up with the moonsault? And when he landed on Christian, he dropped right on top of his head as well. And Christian out of nowhere with a DDT. 
I didn't expect that, never saw it coming, and both men laid out. That's one of those moves where all of a sudden he realized he was up in the air, and they, they're just so innovative. He didn't plan on that happening, but it was there, he saw it, he took the opportunity. When the window opens an inch, these guys know how to pry it open the rest of the way that quickly. Boy, and man, what a shot did Kurt Angle take. So impressive here that Christian Cage ha has been able to match Kurt Angle in, in a wrestling match like this. Champ charges, close line miss. Boy, that elbow was on target. Christian now follows up with a big right hand and then the chop in the corner. Here he goes, Angle with the reversal. Christian into the turnbuckles and then Christian caught him coming in. DDT straight down inverted style and caught him it in the back be, of that head. Could be frog splash time here. We know he loves to use that move. It's one of his patented things when he goes to the top. Here comes the instant classic. He can't hesitate here, though. We know he's got to go for it. He goes up, and that's what he did. He took too long, and Kurt Angle played Watch him. this side roll. One, two, oh! oh he got his Ooh. legs up just in time and was able to kick out. Angle almost pulled it out that time, taking advantage of the missed frog splash. Uh-oh, uh -oh. connects here with the German. Suplexed on target here for the champ, and gonna watch, go for him keep, watch him keep that grip at least a second. One, oh, man, back of the head of Christian Cage crashed. And you saw Christian Cage, he thought he had the ropes. He tries to reach out and grab it. But Kurt Angle always knows where he is. And every time he does that German suplex, he's bringing him back to the middle of the line. Oh, that's and the hat trick. It again. The hat trick, the trifecta, the, yes, three suplexes by the champ, Kurt Angle, and the straps come down. He can feel it at this point. He thinks he can put the instant classic away. He's got it right here. He's just staring at that ankle. You know he wants to grab a hold of it. Boy, doesn't he? And you can see Christian Cage getting to his feet. Look uh, at this. Olympic, Olympic, Olympic slam, slam no. first before the ankle lock. But Christian floats over. Could it be the unprettier? No, he couldn't get ankle it. Ankle lock. There it is. You mentioned it just seconds ago. Great reversal by Christian. Well, you have to read oh, but he held on. He kept a hold of it somehow. Christian did the right thing. But now look at this. He's got it cinched in it again. Christian fights off. And they, oh, look at this. Quick roll up another. They're just rolling each other again. He's back to the ankle lock. Yeah, small package. Angle rolls through. He had the momentum coming. He gets the ankle lock. But here it is, and Christian, two. two. Oh, wow. wow. Christian Cage almost took it right there. Just that close. Christian Cage almost gets the three count. Senses that he may have Angle temporarily reeling here. Off the chop, goes to shoot him over, but then Angle reverses it on him, tosses him out to the apron. Watch Christian head up to the top one more time, but Angle's right on him, and he's got the ankle lock there. On top of him, look at that. Look at where Christian's gun is. It's right on that steel ring post. And the pressure that's putting on him, it's got to hurt. And he knows that, he desperately just kicks out of that thing. Kicked him across the ring. Angle back up and comes right at him one more time. Going to try and suplex him in and does. Man, Christian Cage just couldn't find his speed up there. He got caught in those ropes. Two, done, no! Christian Cage? Wow! Digging down deep to roll the shoulder at two before Angle can retain. Is he gonna go back to the ankle lock one more time? He sure is. Sufficient move that has gained him so many victories in his near 10 year pro career. And Christian hanging on for dear life, but thinking better of, of, of either tapping out or trying to make his way to the ropes to get the break. You can see him trying to grab the ankle of Kurt Angle and, and take him off of his base, and he's done that. And now look at this. Christian Cage has the high ground, and he's trying to He's got, he's got Kurt wrapped up, look at this! Gonna try and make that step over here as well. Angle, trying to fight through this, and he's got it, watch him sit down. Oh man, what an unbelievable move to make Kurt Angle tap out! Unreal. Is he gonna tap? Look how close Angle's got his hand raised. Get that camera back so we can watch his hand. Is he gonna tap? You referee can... Hefner right on him. Oh, he grabs the ankle too. Smart move. He realized that it was right there, and now he's got the ankle on sixth in again. And you can see he's got the ropes. Good move by Christian Cage. Had to do it. Gets the rope break. Quickly follows up on Prettier again. Oh, but Boy, Angle's ready for him this time. Christian lands on his feet, then drops straight down. Take advantage of One, it. Pin two, two. Oh, kicks out. Oh, Christian Cage can't believe it. Karen Angle realized that Todd Horn was left right there in that split second. Boy, the emotions of the champion, the challenger, wife Karen Angle at ringside also evident. Great camera work. 
as we go close up in our TNA World's Heavyweight title match, our main event and final resolution. And now Christian goes back up top one more time, looking down at Karen Angle, momentarily distracted, and Kurt immediately goes up, and Christian bites on the top of his head. Well, it's almost like Christian knew. Phillips blast! He hit it! Here we go! One, two, oh my God! You got to be kidding! Unbelievable, Kurt Angle, that's why he's a world champion, people. That one was close. Again, Karen Angle's involvement leads to the momentary distraction, and Christian fought through it, almost got the pin in spite of Karen Angle being up on the apron. Sometimes you wonder if he was almost planning for it. You just don't know what's going through these champions' minds. Oh, you can see he missed. He, oh, oh, low blow. Low blow. Cheap Hebner shot. Real life. That was behind the back. The referee had his back turned. Olympic and off the Olympic slam. slam. It. Here it is. Yeah. Here's two. Wow. What? Wow. What? Oh, oh, oh. I thought it was over. I thought it was over. And again, Karen Angle up on the apron, and referee Hebner's telling her, only two. Ankle lock again applied, and look where he's got it. Quick move, oh, the roll through, and you saw that there was almost contact made between Kurt and his wife. I'm prettier. I'm prettier. Here Who it is, cover him and win the title. Here it comes. Cowgirl, cowgirl. One, two. Christian kicks out of the Olympic slam, and Angle answers yes by not allowing a three count after the unprettier from the instant classic. And the match continues with the championship belt. Yes, going to the victor, and again, Karen Angle's up on that apron. Look out. You can see Karen Angle thought he had it up. Look at this. What? Christian's going to try and beat him in his own move. He's going to try and beat him for the championship, and Angle's tapping. Angle's tapping. Angle's tapping out. But the, again, Karen Angle has the referee distracted and he's tapped out. AJ Styles, AJ down, taking Karen Angle down off the apron. But you're right, we all saw it. I called it from the second he put it on. Angle tapped out to the ankle locket. He's made Look his decision. That. He's made his decision, and the crowd roars as AJ Styles embraces Christian Cage. He came out. Look at this. What? Oh my God! He just killed Christian in the back, and that gives Kurt Angle a chance at the Olympic Slam. He turned on him. Ten, two, no. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner is still the TNA. We were going to see AJ Styles rejoin Christian Cage. Think back to those coalition days. Instead, he went springboard. Caught him from behind, caught him unaware with that shot to the back, and Angle takes advantage of it just like that. And you know what this proves to me? It proves to me that AJ Styles influenced by this combination, the combination of the ability of Kurt Angle, get in line with him, but also Karen Angle's female charms. I mean, you've got to admit, he was slick how he did it. He came out like he was trying to get Karen out of here because she kept distracting him and costing Christian. Christian saw that, hugged him, thought we thought the coalition was together. And I'm going to tell you, out of nowhere, AJ Styles climbs up those ropes and Christian had his back turned to him. And that flying forearm right to the back of Christian Cage. He didn't stand a chance. And it makes me sick looking at this. But we got to show you how this all came about again. Yeah, that shot to the back was like a stab in the back. And ladies and gentlemen, we will now review everything that went down in this TNA World's Heavyweight title matchup. Here's the early going. Well, you can see them. They're just, they're just feeling each other out. But Christian Cage started off strong. He seemed in control. Right here, everything was going his way. But Kurt Angle turned it around in his favor. Those belly to bellies, those German suplexes, and then Karen Angle. But then, Christian speared a Kurt Angle, almost had a pin there, and look then at that moves off. Wow, he did crash right onto the top of his head. Miraculously, Christian able to avoid the three count. And boy, oh boy, both men laid out right there as Angle caught him off the top. Great reversal here, almost the contact made between husband and wife, and then the unprettier. Thought it was over right there, Mike. He had him, pulled him over, and then AJ Styles came down. He had Christian fooled. Christian thought he was back with oh. AJ, and then the forearm shot to the back. A stab in the back is exactly what it was. There's the Olympic slam, the ensuing three count from referee Earl Hebner in the win. Look at the celebration. Ladies and gentlemen, one thing we learned. Both Kurt and Karen Angle are motivated to hold on to that
TNA title, and that's a deadly combination. This has been a presentation of TNA Entertainment.